a special episode dedicated to the Muslim cowboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna have a real fun rodeo for y'all here today. <laughs> what did I get myself into? What? No, no. I'm kind of. I'm a. I'm a. You know, I'm from West Virginia, so it's not like Texas or anything. But it's a little bit. It's a little bit. A little bit hillbillyish. Me and uh, oh. me, and, me and the Muslim cowboy could could start a uh, like a you know. Christian Muslim band, you know what I mean? Play, play the Grand Old Opry, cop picking. Muslim Cowboys Greatest Hits on Children. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm sure you guys have been able to see from the title, this is about the Muslim Cowboy. So uh, the title is The Muslim Cowboy Said He'll Do <laughs> What? Like Muhammad. Oh, oh, she said, please. White Lily said, please do the stream in a Southern accent. Yeah, we, we will periodically be be uh, busted into Southern accents here, but uh, it would take too much brain power to just keep it up the entire time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All Why right, we so got off the screen. What is, what is wrong with your system? Let me fix your system. What's wrong with you? Anyway, anyway okay. Yeah, yeah, what's up? Okay. Howdy, partner. Oh, howdy. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, what do you guys know about this Muslim cowboy? I had, uh, I, hadn't, I, I, I hadn't <laughs> seen, I hadn't seen anything by him except like I hadn't watched anything by him, but I had seen him pop up in a couple things. Like people are responding to something by the Muslim cowboy was not familiar with him until I think yesterday was, I, I get, I'm not, I, I don't recall him being on my radar at all until yesterday, all of a sudden out of nowhere, I see this guy defending child marriage and i see uh ip responding to him and ap's responding to him and he's just uh he's just <laughs> promoting child marriage up a storm wasn't he oh man was he ever terrible oh, god and it's, it's like it's oh, it's like there's a competition among the dawa guys to see who can defend the child marriage the most yeah like they're all like no let me do it now no let me do it now it's like they oh, they're it's getting really stupid out there or it's like who can do it in the dumbest ways um i mean this, this guy popped up uh i noticed that several months ago i i checked uh it says the muslim cowboy and i thought what the what, what is this and so i went on the guy's profile and i thought people just name themselves anything nowadays to you know to, to sell something to set themselves out the, the blonde the blonde muslim the such and yeah. such muslim the muslim yeah. cowboy yeah. the muslim this the muslim that yeah the apostate prophet and so on but bunch of idiots yeah, and then um yeah stupid and then Ooh. uh uh, oh, I'm inspiring. I'll call myself inspiring philosophy. Inspiring philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but then I saw. <laughs> could be, could I saw be worse. This. I could call myself David. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, I saw this guy pop up with with um, very very proud of child marriage, saying, uh, "You know, if 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 I had a daughter and she was that age, I would I would marry her off too." Things like that, and it got really weird. And he, I I feel like. His other posts don't get very much attention. Whenever he acknowledges and is proud about child marriage, he gets a lot of traction. And maybe he, he thought, huh, people like it when I acknowledge that uh, nine-year-old girls should be having sex. So maybe I should stick to that. Yeah. And, yeah. and also at the, at the same time, whenever he says something like that, that does get like our attention and we respond yeah. to it. And so yeah. any other Muslims are going to rush to his defense because now we're involved. And then so mm -hmm. he's looking at that. Oh, people really like this. Oh, the Kufar, they hate it. But the guys on my side, they love it. So it's weird how people because notice it's like it, this is becoming a thing. If you go back, if you go back 10, 12 years, we were called liars for saying that Islam promotes child marriage. Right. Liar. You must be making that up. Uh, no, Aisha was 18. Everyone knows this. Uh, it's just a one week source that says she was not. It's like, what are you talking about? It's all over the place. And there's nothing that says anything else. And uh, so what do we do? What do we do for years? I mean, year after year after year, we're posting the sources and posting the sources and posting the sources and we're bringing it up in debates and we're making videos on it. Finally, it gets to like a critical mass where they have to acknowledge it. And all of a sudden now it's just a thing like you're you're not doing Dawa unless you're defending, defending banging little kids. It's not Dawa. It ain't Dawa. Yeah. If you're not defending pedophilia, you're not doing Dawa, ladies and gentlemen. That's the new rule. <laughs> Well, I knew about the Muslim cowboy last year or so, roughly, because he 
I, I get tagged in TikTok videos. And I got tagged in one of his videos, just making a, a bad argument against the gospel of Matthew. So I responded. Uh, and Wait, then he was making a bad now. argument. I don't believe you. Yeah, no, probably, you wouldn't be surprised. Well, then he posted another video a few months ago where he was trying to say that Christians change their Bibles. Let's go look at the King James and then let's look at modern versions and let's see verses are missing. And to prove his point, he brings up a modern Bible and says, look, this verse from Matthew is missing. Let me get this Bible from the 1800s. What he doesn't realize is he grabs a parallel Bible and the parallel <laughs> Bible in the 1800s had like the King James version and the updated revised version on it with the verses missing. So you have basically the two verses. So he puts the page on the screen and says, look, it's here in the King James version, but you can see on the other side of the page, it's missing in the revised version. So he didn't even check the full page he used to try to show the Wait, Bible's wait, 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 a Dawa, a Dawa guy who can't actually <laughs> see what's on the page that he's citing? I swear, where, where, but yes, where, have, where have I heard that before? Oh, with every other Dawa guy on the planet. <laughs> I am yeah. surprised. I'm shocked. That, I, I don't know. That's That doesn't seem right. Hey, what is this? This person's been trolling around. I can't tell if it's serious because the, the, the name of the channel is My Heart Finds Peace and Solace in Islam. And it says, David, I noticed that you always run away from the dear Ahmed. I'm saying this because this person keeps going around to live streams and reposting the same thing like every every 30 seconds or whatever. Yeah, it's probably a, it's probably he not always Ahmed. dismantles you in all debates. Why do you always run from debating him? Can you answer? And so this is either Nadir himself or it's a troll who just wants me to make fun of Nadir because I've debated Nadir like five times. You can absolutely crush Nadir. No one cares because he has no fans. So it's kind of pointless. <laughs> so the only one, the only person who ever thinks Nader Ahmed did a good job is Nader Ahmed himself. So yeah, uh, these are the only possibilities. There is simply no way that this guy is a serious guy. Yeah. So uh, I don't so, even know who he is. Yeah, you, you you don't need to. It's it's basically a situation where we were. Just I wish talking, I was you. <laughs> we were just talking the other day about how like the new Dawa guy will come along and he'll have some like different way of doing things, right? And it takes a while for people to catch up. Like Daniel, Daniel comes out and he says, "Oh, this study shows this, and this paper shows that," and people kind of aren't ready for it. People aren't ready for it. They haven't. People haven't read all these sources and stuff like that. And it's it's if eventually people catch on to what's going on because you end up with someone like. Uh, like IP here, who actually reads all the source, and like, whoa, this guy's this guy's this guy has not, is not representing anything correctly, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then after that, once once the cat's out of the bag on his methodology, then he can get schooled by AP because then he's oh my method's not working anymore. I can't just keep making stuff up uh, about sources. And then he has no he's, he has nothing to fall back on. But guess what? That's been going on for decades. Some new Dawa guy will come along. He'll have some he'll have something that he does that's his way of doing things. It'll take, and he'll have, he'll be successful for a while. And then, and then people will catch on to what he's doing because it's always deception. And then he, he falls out of favor and people don't pay attention to him anymore. In other words, go back 15 years, look at who the Dawa guys are there. They're not popular anymore. They're not. They, they've all, it, it, most of them, most of the guy we were, guys we were dealing with 15 years ago, you don't even hear a peep out of them anymore. They, they've, they've moved on. Uh, they're obsolete. Um, and so the the Dawa guys that you have now, five years from now, they're going to be obsolete because they're all going to be they're all going to be exposed by them. And so, uh, yeah, that's the that's the sucky situation. So Nadir, that's like guys, that's like two thousand eight. So my heart finds peace and solace in Islam. Uh, I don't know if you're Nadir and therefore serious or just trolling. But stop uh, stop posting the same stupid thing over and over again. I'm going to block you. <laughs> I don't have I don't have time for this nonsense. All right, guys, are we ready to check out? No, the Muslim cowboy. <laughs> Yeehaw! I, I don't know is, if these. Oh, go ahead. Is, isn't it weird that uh, this guy wakes up in the morning and is like, "Alhamdulillah, I woke up again." Uh, then he does his prayer and then he's like, "All right, let me post on Twitter. What do my fans like the most? Oh, yes, yeah, sex with children, child <laughs> marriage. I got to defend. You know what I got to do today?" I'm a defense child marriage, so hold on tight to your saddle horse, son. Yeah. Guys. <laughs> what? Guys, it's not child marriage because once they start getting a little bit of puberty going on, they're automatic they're automatically women. So oh, yeah. seven, eight year olds, uh five year olds going through precocious puberty, they're women in their eyes. So can't be child marriage. Come on. Yep, yeah. that is that is, matter of fact, let, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take a look at his tweets. Um let's see, let's I'll go see. ahead and bring up I, <laughs> I don't know if these are, I tried to get them in, 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 in a little bit of the order, but 
uh, he's responding to stuff back and forth. So I don't know what the what the exact order is of these, but we'll just go through some of his tweets. I'll pull mm-hmm. up a tweet. Uh, I'll read it. You guys can share any quick thoughts and it will go yeah. through. I have I have eight of his tweets from hopefully my uh my condition of voice cracking doesn't happen so much i don't want to excite any of the dialogue guys Ooh, he's ready mm. <laughs> <laughs> and i'll i'll try to keep my goat quiet <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's check let's check out some of these uh some of these awesome tweets by this super genius let's do um, so this is what he posted today <laughs> This is what he posted today. So this is uh, the last thing he posted that I actually uh, got. But uh, I'm honored. The biggest Exian Kaffir in the world is coming after me. And he is bringing his atheist boy toy. That's weird because AP wasn't even involved at this point. It was uh, it was me and inspiring philosophy. And the guy's uh, so weird that he can't even, uh, you know, look at this, look at the thumbnail and the title and notice that it's David <laughs> Wood and IP, not David well, Wood and Apostate Prophet. Well, he, according according to IP, he can't even have a, a Bible on the screen and, you know, read nope. it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And not only that, when when he that that video of him with the Bible, he pinned it to the top of his TikTok page. So he was so happy with it; it's still pinned up there. Um. It, it, and here, uh, you know, it's funny. We're sitting here making fun of him for, for uh, well, I mean, guys, it, what we're talking about right now is tip of the iceberg. Wait till we actually go into this <laughs> issue. This is embarrassingly horrible for him. And so you, so there's a part of you that thinks, ah, ha, we're going to expose him. But everything we're saying about him, about how it, embarrassingly ignorant he is of both Islam and biology and everything else that he talks about constantly that we think should make people go, oh, okay, we can't listen to you, is exactly what makes you successful as a Dawah guy, right? The, yeah. the things that we look down upon and say, this is like the dumbest thing ever, those are the features that make you a, a, a Dawah hero. So he might actually have what it takes, and we'll do a, uh, we'll do our little part. We'll do our little part to uh, give, him a little, give him a little push here, give him a little bump, give him a little bump in popularity, you know, you know what I'm talking about? We, uh, we would love for these kinds of guys to get more popular. They, we want them to be the poster boys for Islam. I want yeah. everyone to see these popular Dawah Gandis like Daniel Hakikichu, Ali Dawah, and the Muslim cowboy as being the poster children for Islam. That's what we want. Yeah, well, and, and, and um, let's yes. go. Oh, oh. <laughs> I was about to go through more of his tweets, but then I realized, you know, I wasn't I wasn't going to uh, I wasn't going to talk about Muhammad uh, getting kissed all over his uh, milky white flesh by one of his companions. Uh, But your your buddy there, AP, your buddy, uh, the Muslim cowboy, he brought it up. He's a boy toy, boy toy. Okay, let's talk about boy toys there, sport. (laughs) There we have it. Sunan Abu Daud, 5224. Abdur Rahman ibn Abu Layla, quoting Usaid ibn Hudair, a man of the Ansar, said that while he was given to jesting and was talking to the people and making them laugh, the prophet poked him under the ribs with a stick. Ooh. He said, Muhammad poked him with a stick. And he said, let me take Ooh. retaliation. Muhammad said... <laughs> Oh, you take it, retaliation. You take it all. He said, you are wearing a shirt, but I am not. The prophet then raised his shirt. So this Muhammad uh, Muhammad, uh, pulls off his garment, and the man embraced him and began to kiss his side. Then he said, this is what I wanted, messenger of Allah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Muhammad went, oh, it tickles. (laughs) That's how Muhammad said, yeah. And and the guy was like, "Ah, oh, come here, come here. I want to kiss more. I want to have more of you. It's beautiful. How no. about I go a little bit lower? Anyway, no, you don't. Uh, you don't realize. So that's that's like the beginning. And then part two is all these passages about Muhammad trying to go to the mosque and he's got semen all over his clothes. <laughs> now no, again, yes. again, Muslim cowboy, we're we're, we're trying to we're trying to we're trying to give you a friendly <laughs> friendly warning here. Uh, we respond in a we we respond in one way towards thoughtful you know uh, arguments and objections and so on. We respond we respond a bit differently to people uh, running their mouths and tossing insults around. So so 
I've made you aware that when you start insults, we immediately go back on your profit with that stuff. So that means that if you do it, you're basically begging us to make fun of your horrible child molesting profit. Just wanted to, that to be clear. All right. Should we hmm? All right let's, check out, let's check out some more uh, tweets and uh, you guys can agree with uh, everything. Or if you have any objections, you can object. <laughs> uh, so this is this is one that uh, he responds to here in a second. So someone asked him, uh, yes, explain how having sex with a nine year old is OK by anthropology or biology or psychology. So he's saying, OK, g explain how it's OK. And the Muslim Cowboys response is, yes, if she is a woman. And anthropologically, women have become women at nine all over the world. You really what? need to study, <laughs> champ. What in the oh world do you think goodness. anthropologically actually means here? How, 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 how does it make sense? Anthropologically, women have become women at the age. What does it even mean? Anthrop anthropology would be the study of, you know, of, of, of humanity, of all of uh, human history, of all of it how, how can you say well uh, <laughs> yeah women have been becoming women at the age of nine anthropologically speaking forever so yeah that's yeah. that's that's very stupid well you could you could also uh, say well <laughs> you know civilizations have been raping each other anthropologically forever so <laughs> what's wrong with that um yeah, so let's go through a couple of these. And uh, I know IP is going to uh, object to some of this. So no, no, but I, I put, that one, maybe. I put that one first. And then so people asked him if this is him, if it, the, he actually said this. And he said, yep, it's me. We support our prophet's marriage to Aisha at nine. No big deal. He's just the pattern of conduct for all people and has people even in our time defending child marriage because of his example. No big deal. But you heard it from the Muslim cowboy. She was a woman through and through. Doesn't that sound disgusting? She was a woman through and through. Through wow. and through? Like through what? What the heck is this guy even talking about? What a pervert, man. It, um, it's beyond stupid. It, like, I, 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 uh, can you share my screen, David? I'll just put this study up. Oh, this is actually one I got one from uh, Daniel Kikikichu, who, uh, you know, of course, doesn't understand half of what he's, he's saying. But yeah, this is a. Uh, Points out, let me just go down to the graph down here. This is about, uh, so growth of birth canal in adolescent girls. You can see nine, it's nowhere near ready. You're, you're you know, very, very low percentage at that point. It's not going to be ready until when the CDC says most girls complete puberty, which is between the ages of 15 and 17. And this is based on modern nutrition, of course. So no eight, nine, 10 year old has a birth canal ready. Uh, so they're not a woman physically by any stretch yeah and of the it's very very important that you brought up birth canal because if you look at the the tanner stages and so on that's the final stage of puberty when you basically take on the shape of an adult woman so guys there there the, the the people responding to have the mentality as i pointed out a million times old enough to bleed old enough to breed so if you're if you as soon as you get your first, you know, your first period ready to hop on you, ready to hop on you, ready to ready to get with it. Um, yeah. puberty, well, it's say, already too say, late, too much waiting until that point already. They say because puberty is because puberty is a, you know, because you know, puberty is a sign that you're an adult. No, puberty is a process yeah. that takes years. Puberty is a process that takes years. There are there are stages. So if you're talking about a girl, her breasts will st she'll get but they call them buds, buds for breasts and so on. They're not they're not fully grown and so on, but they start. Um pubic hair, a menstrual cycle, and the last stage is really really important for safely bearing children that's when your hips widen your birth canal widens and so on you start getting them pregnant before then notice you can get pregnant as soon as you get a menstrual cycle you can get pregnant it's just not safe to get pregnant well, it's not, she's ready? It's what are you not talking safe about? for you to get pregnant because your hips haven't ready? widened well put the other study on the screen put the other study i have on the screen this one's important so i showed you the the graph showing that uh, you know, girls, uh, their birth canal just simply is not ready. This was a uh, cross-sectional study done in Latin America. And it found after after an adjustment for 16 major confounding factors, adolescents age 
15 years or younger had higher risk of maternal death, early neonatal death, and anemia compared with women aged 20 to 24. They note that if you are having a child under the age of 15, you are four more to four times more likely to die uh, from pregnancy related complications. Uh, uh, re than re someone repeat who's repeat 16 that. Or over. Repeat that. Why you uh, be very very clear on that? So so you're making the point. Yes, if you you know if you're in the process of puberty at 12 and something you 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 can get pregnant. It's more, it's significantly more dangerous than it is for a girl who's 16 or 18 or something like that. But go ahead and say what you, what you were pointing out. Yeah. So here's table four, the adjusted, uh, the adjusted ratios here. You can see that at the bottom, maternal death, 15 and under, you are four times more likely to die from pregnancy related complications than someone who's 16 or older. So you're not even what, talking, just why? to be clear, you're not even talking about nine. That would be like insanely early. You're talking Insane. about even just, you're, you would talk, you're talking about just under 15. Notice 15 you can, under. you, yeah, you can get pregnant. My mom got pregnant with me when she was 15. It can be done. You're pointing out statistically, it's significantly more dangerous the younger you are. Exactly. Hmm. And yeah, yeah. This is one of the reasons that I showed on the last study that I brought up. The birth canal just isn't, it isn't ready to deliver children. Uh, we are a very unique species in that we have produced very large heads. It's hard for women to push out such giant heads compared to like other species. And so women need to be fully mature to actually have children. If you're 15 or under, you're four times more likely to die from maternal related complications. Yeah, just to be clear, and, and there, there could be there could be multiple there could be multiple reasons for that. But the most basic reason is if your hips haven't widened and your birth canal hasn't widened, which takes place in standard at the end of puberty, which a girl's never going to get to the way these guys are going, um, then you're pregnant and the baby can't get out of you because your birth canal isn't wide enough for the baby to come to baby come through. And so I'll, I'll the, just want to the, ask one it's, question. it's much, I oh, just want to just finish with this. It's much more dangerous for the mother. I mean, it, it is safer no, in the yeah. world right now in the, in, in places in the West and, and, and in places where you have access to medical care, cause they can do an emergency C section and stuff like that. I mean, for, but you're talking about for centuries, you, that you're dead. You're you're dead if that happens. So it's dangerous for the mother, dangerous for the baby. And these guys are saying, so what? Bang her anyway. Yeah. Now, uh, all of this sounds a little bit ridiculous. What I'm hearing here from from you guys. Uh, so I, just a quick question, IP and uh, David. So when a child is born and the child is, I don't know, at the age of of, of one or two, it starts uh, talking and saying like, oh, da 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 da, mama food, and things like that. So. Uh, doesn't that mean that since the baby started or since the, the child started speaking and using its brain, that it is therefore ready to run for president of the United States of America? Yes. Absolutely. Well, in this country, yes. Well, first, you got to be in Congress first. So typically, Congress is filled with two year olds right now. So but then so you got to be Ford, I think. Hey, these let's not get years. political on this. No, I agree completely. <laughs> I agree completely. A bunch of morons. <laughs> but but this is basically what they what they're what they're doing right these these Muslim apologists uh, they're basically like well you know uh, there is a development a, a development has begun there is a sign look I see I see what appears to be a hair attempting to grow out of uh, this spot of this little girl's uh, you know region therefore she's now ready for sex that's yes. basically what well that's doing. what that's ready what Daniel said her. in my debate with him. that's what Daniel said in my debate with him in the cross examination. You know, I was bringing up the whole issue of monarchy. Like, do you wait to monarchy? He says, no, wait till puberty. And he admitted in the cross examination <laughs> section, you can start having sex with a girl, marry her when she starts puberty, even if she's not reached the point of monarchy yet, which shows you this is not about his stupid argument, which is about maximizing the fertility window, because mm -hmm. you can start having sex with them before the fertility window. So it's all mm -hmm. about their sadistic pleasure they want to give to men and pedophiles. It has nothing to do with actual uh, fertility rates or maximizing your birth window. It's all nonsense. This, hmm. this is all done to satisfy sadistic men and their pleasures at the expense of little girls and all the harm they'll suffer. Well, Muslim yeah. men just want to have fun. What's wrong with the? Yeah, I have. Uh, we're, we're about to see how creepy that is. You, you, you got more stuff you wanted to share from this study, uh, IP? 
Uh, I got another study I, I could bring up here. Uh, so if you want to close out, I'll put up the next one here. Uh, how's that work? What if you just pull up another one? Will the new one pop up? No, it, when I hit stop sharing. So I'll hit stop sharing, it goes black. So oh, see, okay. and I can, I can start sharing the next one here because there's another good one. I'll so just this, wait. This I'm is, not even bringing you guys back up on the screen because you're just going to bring up another study. All right, here we go. And we're yeah. back. So now let's also talk about the past. So this was pointed out, this study is basically pointing out that in the past, women were actually maturing slower. They were maturing mm. at a slower rate. Why are so you pointing? Why are you point? Why are you pointing that out, IP? Is it because one of the one of the things we hear from people who are making it up as they go along is that oh, but you know, in the past, girls matured way faster, so that by the time a girl's nine, she's a fully grown adult. That sort of thing. Yeah, the moronic Dawagandas Dal pushed this nonsense that somehow in the seventh century, a nine year old was basically a retired old lady. It's mm -hmm. utter nonsense. Yep, like. Yep. Actually, it's the opposite. So what they have done, and I've caught Dawagandas doing this, is they, they bring up studies about how girls in the past were actually... Hang on, hang what? on. Uh, AP's, uh, AP's, laughing, AP's laughing at that uh, remark. She's a, she's a retired old woman. Yeah, so he was laughing at that, and then I was thinking, that is that is funny. And then I was thinking of like a nine-year-old girl going to Denny's, and then like, does she get... <laughs> Does she get the children's discount, according to everyone else, or does she get the senior citizens discount, which is which is what would happen if Daniel's running the Denny's? Anyway, go ahead. So what Dalbo Gandis will do is they'll find study, studies that actually do say women in the past did mature quicker. The problem is they don't read the studies. The studies are pointing out that girls during the Paleolithic period were aging faster because of better nutrition. We were hunter-gatherers. We were living off wild game. So girls could reach puberty uh, or the age of monarchy at, at 7, 8, roughly by 10 or 11. However, when we started uh, basically living off agriculture, grains, that was delayed. So you can see this graph that near the age of monarchy starts getting delayed roughly about 5,000 years ago or so. And then it reaches a peak around 1840. So it keeps getting worse, delayed. This study directly says, thus by medieval times, so the time of Muhammad, the average age of monarchy was deferred to 16 and a half years as it remains today among underprivileged adolescents in developing countries. So Aisha, the odds of Aisha having reached the age of monarchy in her period, astronomically low. Like, be all, like she'd have to be the one in a billion possibilities of that happening girls in this period were not reaching the age of monarchy till on average around 16 15 roughly that age so in the, if you go back to the paleolithic period maybe if muhammad was running around then they could have made that excuse but no during the agricultural period spe specifically the medieval period the age of monarchy was being delayed to 16 and a half so girls in this time are actually were actually aging slower than girls are today it's the exact opposite of what the dawagandas say that's funny uh, so j just to recap here, um, and, and why this is relevant, th this is another like a uh, sort of misrepresented source that we say, uh, we say, hey, it's messed up that your prophet, who's the pattern of conduct for mankind, uh, said it's okay to have sex with a, uh, well, as we're about to see, a prepubescent girl, but, um, but with Aisha. It's messed up that your prophet had sex with a nine-year-old girl. And then the response is, ah, but girls in the past matured faster. And they will cite a study. They'll say, oh, yes, the study has shown that girls in the past matured faster. And the vast majority of people just take their word for it. Don't actually look it up. You're pointing out IP. You actually look it up. And it doesn't say that girls during the time of Muhammad... Uh, matured faster. It was girls during the Paleolithic period in the time of Muhammad. Average age is about uh, 16 and a half or so. Is that, is that what you're saying? Mm. Well, that's when they hit monarchy. You would see okay. signs of puberty early, mm -hmm. but they're not going to be able to even produce children mm -hmm. because they, they've not they've not had their monthly periods yet. So if you're going for nine, 10 year olds, you're just using them for sex. You're not actually like maximizing the fertility window or it's about childbearing because that's all nonsense you're just you're a, just you, using, you just want to bang a kid 
basically. You're a pedophile, yeah. which is what Muhammad yeah. was. You're, you're, you're pointing out there's no there's no benefit to this. There's no there's no upside yeah. to this. It's not like, oh, you are maximizing for fertility. You're not. You're endangering the girl. That's all you're doing. So why would you do that if you don't have to? Well, it must just be because you want to bang a, bang a little girl. Is that, is that about right? Yeah. And if you want to put the last study I have up here, I'll just show like mentally an umbrella study was done recently. Now, an umbrella study is a very well, interesting We're, we're talking study. about people. We're talking about people, not umbrellas here. So get yeah. give us so, good information. Various studies are done on child sexual abuse. Then they're collected into meta-analyses. So meta-analyses survey all the literature done on a specific issue. This is an umbrella study. It collected all the meta-analyses done on this issue, including... Uh, the Bruce Ryan, a uh, very controversial and famous study, and notes that's an outlier. They note in this study that, yes, when child sexual abuse results in mental damage, uh, psychiatric issues for anyone, for, for these children involved. So they can suffer from things like borderline personality disorder, anxiety, depression, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, schizophrenia. Uh, and one uh, psychosocial, uh, psycho, uh, psychosocial outcome met high quality standards. So they basically point out, if you're going to start using children for sex, they're going to suffer from all sorts of mental issues. Uh, that's just was, and this is not even looking at child marriage yet. All the studies I cited in the debate show child marriage is just as harmful, if not more harmful. Because not only are you using these children for sex, you're expecting them to be wives and mothers and manages, manage households. And they suffer from suicidal thoughts, depression, all sorts of uh, mental issues on top of that. This is just looking at the sexual, the sexual aspect results in mental uh, harm done to these poor girls and boys. Uh, but when you force child marriage onto them, like the studies I cited in my debate with Daniel, it makes it even worse because they're being expected to do far more now because now they have to keep being abused night after night and they have to be wives and mothers and manage households and they just simply can't. So for the Muslim cowboy to say that we need to study up on this stuff shows he hasn't studied up on this. He, doesn't he obviously has it. Yeah. And again, he doesn't know what Islam teaches about this. He, he's completely ignorant. It, it's, it, he sounds like someone who watched a couple of Dawah videos from people like, uh, I don't know, Ali Dawah or something like this and, and doesn't know any better. Um, but notice it, that's fine. It's, it's, it's one thing for someone to be completely ignorant. Why is it that in Dawah, the more ignorant you are, the more you're expected to, to speak about all this stuff? Weird stuff. Um, yeah, you can look at right. you get suicidal attempts at 84%, psychological symptoms 70. It's really bad. I mean, I don't think people realize how bad this is for kids. So you're pointing out, you're pointing out that it's dangerous physically and mentally. Yes. Marrying kids is bad for them mentally and physically, and also dangerous for any child that could be uh, produced by that relationship. Is that, uh, is that an accurate assessment of the real data, not just what we're hearing from the Muslim cowboy and the Dawa guys? Yes. And I got studies on the showing that child marriage uh, results in problems for the, the offspring. They can have low birth weight, but they can also be raised uh, with poor quality because you're basically having children trying to raise babies. They don't raise them as well as women in their 20s who have fully developed brains. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's why would you want a 12 year old raising a child? They're, they're still trying to grow up and yeah. these morons think that that's what should be happening. It's, it's so Yeah. Stupid. And I, I remember reading about that a long time ago when I first started writing, uh, writing about this. So you're talking like, I don't know, 2006, something like that, 2005, 2006, somewhere in there. Uh, when I started looking it up, because I was hearing from the Dawah guys back then, no, it's totally fine. It, 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 it's, it's not harmful at all. The ones who were actually honest about it happening, they were the minority. But those who did would try to defend it and say it's not harmful. And so I was actually looking stuff up. And it's just pointing out basic things about like nutrition. It's a, a girl who's 10, in some cases, can get pregnant. But if her body is still growing, her body is using the nutrients, things, you know, calcium and stuff for her bones oh, yeah. to grow. And when she has to be breastfeeding a baby, then the, the nutrients are going to the base. They're like dividing up the nutrients because she needs them for herself, for her to grow. And yet she's giving them to her her baby who's who's growing. And it's just uh, it's 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 just really stupid. And notice you got. This is not hard stuff. This is not this is not difficult stuff. Guys, when you're when you're nine or ten and you're a girl, your hips are this wide. Five years later, they're much wider. 
Your birth canal is much wider. It is much safer for a baby to go through that. Therefore, why not wait? And they go, no, she's a fully grown woman even at nine. Why? Why are you the, saying the that? Is, because because Alitawa said so. What the heck? You, what? The, the issue is you can explain all of this all you want. You can explain that um, simply looking at the facts, looking at the science, looking at the, the health aspect. I mean, if, let's say they don't want to accept science, right? Because they associate that with some, I don't know, with some the high bar work. They the don't get it. The science of the <laughs> just, just, just looking at the, the developmental aspect, looking at the health aspect and all of that, looking at the happiness of the of the women, of, of course, that doesn't matter very much in Islam. But, in, but yeah, still, we could look at it. Uh, even if you explain all of these things, how harmful and how bad it is and how a girl is not ready not even remotely ready for marriage or anything like it just because she hit puberty which is the beginning of the development stage even if you explain to them it made very clear that a woman needs to fully develop in order to be able to bear such things with the minimum risk they will still not get it and they will still not uh you know um acknowledge it they will still not refuse to let go of the idea that uh having sex with little children is justified because this is what islam is because islam tells him it is okay it is okay and no matter what you say no matter what i say no matter what the science says no matter what the paper says no matter what the world says it doesn't matter to them to them this is just uh the kuffar the enemies of islam babbling things that don't matter to us because we know the truth as the prophet muhammad delivered it to us sallallahu alayhi wasallam that's what we're dealing with. And I would say, like, even if you knew nothing else about Islam, apart from the fact that as soon as people accept it, they start getting an overwhelming urge to start defending child marriage and to endanger children, that would be enough to be pretty suspicious about this. And I mean, I mean, just notice how quick you had a, uh, what was it, a week ago, we went through a video from Rosie's Corner. So Rosie, all her videos are, hey, I'm a new convert. I'm a new. She has multiple videos already defending child marriage. Oh and she's saying in her video, she's saying something very similar to the Muslim cowboy that, well, if you, uh, you know, as soon as a girl, as soon as a girl menstruates, she's a grown, she's a fully grown woman, which is insane and idiotic. And notice it completely flies in the face of science and reality. So it's them. It's Sneeko. Sneeko was asked about about child marriage before he converted. He's like, oh, that's gross. And then after he converted, he's, you know, after I've done more research on the issue, I've discovered that mm. it's it's really, really not that bad. And it can actually be this really good thing. It's like, what happened when you converted that your brain just says yes to child marriage? Uh, and the the real answer is you get programmed to mindlessly accept whatever the Dawa guys say. And the Dawa guys are now defending child marriage. If you go back 15 years when the Dawa guys were denying it and saying, no, that's a lot. Oh, what, what did what did your average Muslim say when you brought up child marriage? They said, you're a liar for saying that. Why are you saying I'm a liar? Because our Dawa guys said it. Notice there's no concern for what's in the actual Muslim sources. Uh, they just repeat what their Dawa guys say. Then all of a sudden their Dawa guys get to the point where they have to be honest about it. And then now people just repeat that. And it's uh, it's very interesting stuff. But uh, let's go through a couple of uh, the Muslim Cowboys tweets, and then we're going to talk about pigs for a second. Just want to have, have a quick. It's very important we bring up pigs when we're I, talking about it. Yeah, people will people will see the connection. I didn't. Uh, you you could have used any farm animal like goats or sheep, but we have Dawa guys watching, so we don't want anyone to get excited. They, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> so we're thinking pigs since they since they view them as yucky. Maybe they want to touch them or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> but um, okay. So we we already, we already checked this one out. Uh, where he's asked, hey, is this you defending child marriage? And he says, yep, it's me. We support our prophet's marriage to Aisha at nine. No big deal. She was a woman through and through. She was a woman through and through. So notice, uh, Aisha was a prepubescent. We're going to see this. We'll go through some of the sources. Aisha was a prepubescent nine-year-old girl playing with dolls when her prophet spread her legs apart and penetrated her. You gotta be quite delusional to defend such an abomination. Like it's 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 mind blowing to me how delusional this guy is. Yeah, and and he says she was a woman through and through. Like, what do you mean by a woman through and through? You mean like a what a fully developed woman? What what are you talking about? What do you mean by this? Because whatever you mean by woman, no what this is not what anyone else except your ummah means by the word woman. But I just tweeted, I just tweeted like, I don't know, like an hour ago or uh, so, something like that. I, I tweeted a little while ago. I pointed out like th 
when a man says, hey, I'm a woman now. Okay, so that, that person would say, I, I identify as a woman. Okay, well, what a, and what's, the, what's the criticism of that? Ah, but biological reality, biological reality says you're biologically a man. So what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, I identify as a woman, and I'm, I'm saying that as long as I identify as a, as a woman, that's, uh, that, that's, that, that's good. You, you should all respect that. Muslims, Muslims like the Muslim cowboy, I'm assuming, would say, no, that's horrible. You can't just you can't just ignore biology and identify. OK, what are you doing, dude? You're not we're not even talking about a nine year old girl who identifies as a as a woman through and through. You're saying you identify the girl as a woman through and through. So now it's not a person saying, you know, I feel like this and therefore I'm identifying as this. This is you, a complete outsider saying what someone else is. So if you can sit, if you could take a, a prepubescent girl, girl who hasn't reached puberty and say, I identify her as a woman, what objection could you possibly have to a, to a man saying, I identify as a woman? If you're ignoring all, you're, you're basically saying it's perfectly acceptable to ignore all of biological reality and just say something. And as long as I say it, that makes it true. Great. Anyone can do that. Why do you complain about it when a trans person does it? So anyway, we have a we have another definition of what a trans woman is. Uh, you could be a man and identify as a woman. That would make you a trans woman in one way. Or you could say, hey, there's a little girl. She hasn't reached puberty. She's uh, she's uh, playing with dolls. And we're just calling her a woman through and through. OK, so you're maybe, you're you're making her a trans woman. Maybe some of the trans activists should become seventh century Arabian caravan robbers. And then mm -hmm. Muslims are agreeing with them that, you know, yeah, trans but, rights are you know, all this well, stuff. The, you, you, you wouldn't need to go that far. All you need is some of the Dawah guys to say, OK, now now uh, now trans is trans. All the trans stuff is fine. And people would just repeat it. It'd be easy. Um, I, I pointed it out earlier on Twitter, but um, it's, it's very funny that this guy uh, says that um, uh, that she was a woman through and through, through because and through. apparently she was nine and she hit puberty mm -hmm. or hit puberty. Um, but no, it, she it's didn't. very ironic because the, the very guy, yeah, according to him, according but, to him, according uh, to him. Yeah, according to him, but according to him because guy, because he hasn't read the sources that exactly. we're about to read. <laughs> yeah, but the, the the very same guy, very funnily, uh, has been tweeting about children since October seven in a very interesting context, which is that um, there is a war ongoing, uh, and during the war, um, you know, uh, people are dying that are uninvolved in the war, possibly, mm -hmm. uh, and Hamas reports so many children have been killed. The issue with uh, so with with the amount of children killed is that this is a the definition of children by UN definition. So uh, below the age of <laughs> below the age of uh, eighteen, everyone there is a is considered a child. So this guy takes those numbers from Hamas then and says, "Look, Israel killed nine thousand children." Now hold on a second. Lots of those, probably most of those, are not children by your definition. They yeah, are. any any of those who had any sign, <laughs> any sign of puberty. So, that, so the girls don't need to have a, a menstrual cycle at all. They can, you know, they can have some some pubic hair or something like that. Any of those are, according to the Muslim cowboy, fully grown adults. So, how yeah, many yeah. how many actual children Muslim cowboy have been killed? We, we'd like to see I mean, those numbers. If I was dirty enough, when when he posts something, uh, when he posts a, a footage of some of a, of a teenager uh, dying and there's, there's uh, children are dying, I would just respond to that and say, no, that was an adult through and through. Through and through. <laughs> yep. Yep. This is wild, wild, creepy stuff. All right. Let's uh, let's read it. Let, let's go ahead and uh, go through the uh, last tweet. They're, they're, they're all pretty similar. I just didn't um, wondering if there's any I don't want to miss any points. Uh, about what he's saying and the, the brilliant points he's making. Um, so someone says defending child marriage is wild. He says no one has ever defended child marriage. It's a marriage between a man and a woman, even if she's a <laughs> even if she's a prepubescent nine year old girl playing with dolls whose hips haven't widened, whose breads, ha whose breasts haven't budded, who doesn't have pubic hair, who doesn't have a menstrual cycle. I'm just calling her a woman because that's how things work for the Muslim cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> It's not permissible to consummate with children, bright guy. No, notice. I mean, this, I, guys, I find this. I find this seriously interesting. That it's just. It, there's no biological requirement as far as when someone is a woman, according to him, because Aisha hadn't reached puberty, and the Quran doesn't require 
that a girl reaches puberty. So what he's saying is, if we bang her, then she's a she's a fully adult woman. <laughs> so that that's the criterion. Oh. Notice, notice, you could apply this exact same reasoning, this exact to to having sex with a baby. So you know, uh, Daniel Hakika choose dream date of an eleven month old girl, um, a, a who reaches precocious puberty. If you had sex, you could say that is a fully grown woman. If I have sex with her, this is absolutely insane. This dude is seriously sick. Well, and the, he's the, que also the question wrong. is, yeah, yeah. And the question he is, is, was it was he, he did he have the same view before he converted, or is this strictly strictly an Islamic thing? But go ahead, IP. Yeah, well, Islam clearly rots the brain. I mean, look at what you end hey, up that's offensive. basically believing and, and defending. It's it's, it's horrifying. Mm -hmm. But he's wrong. I mean, Daniel Hakikachu debated me on ch child marriage. So he's just wrong. His own da 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 well, you know, buddy there. On child marriage. They call, they, yeah, they do. I see a child marriage all the time. No. This guy, so this guy's so, just saying, hey, what everyone else in the world calls child marriage, just change the world child to adult. It's the exact same thing, but we're just going to change the word and then it's okay. What, what I remember after the debate is Daniel was posting really dumb memes claiming that, like, I believe that a woman magically be, like, pops into existence when they turn 18, like, girl, 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 woman. This is what they believe. The moment you even yeah. have a little bit of sign of puberty, yeah. you're magically a woman. They don't believe puberty is a process at all. Yeah. You just start we, using the Yeah, so we believe it's a process. And as far as us, if we were to start picking dates, it, we would pick, if we had to pick an age, because, you know, notice there, there's just no perfect method because girls do develop at different rates and so on. So, so, but it's, you don't want to say, okay, we're just going to, you know, we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to check out the girls, right? We're just going to check them out. Hey, girl, come here. We want to find out if you're, uh, everyone, eh, drop your drawers, drop your drawers. Eh, let's see what you got going on down there. You don't want to do that. You don't want the government to do that as far as making laws and so on. So what we say is here's an age at which the vast majority of girls are, are physically mature by. So let's go with that well, yeah, because it's earlier it's going to be dangerous. Like the science is basically this. You base girls basically finish puberty between the ages of 15, 17. Okay. By 17, like 99% of girls have finished puberty. So it makes perfect sense that the following age point, 18, is when you're granted adulthood. It makes perfect sense that when if you finish puberty, 15 to 17, you become an adult the following year. Like just from a legal standpoint, that makes total sense. Now, now notice. According to our good friend, the Muslim cowboy, a girl can have all, every last one of the characteristics that biologically would identify her as a girl rather than a woman. And according to him, you could just say, nope, we're calling her a woman, therefore it's not child marriage. So again, he's just renaming things. And he, I can't stop you from doing that, but I can point out uh, you know, some problems that it might arise with that. Hey, uh, uh, Muslim cowboy, if I say, don't bang this goat, and you say, ah, but it's not a goat, I say it's a fully grown woman. <laughs> like, that that would be like the, that would be pretty much the same thing, right? You're just saying, oh, it's a goat, but I'm calling it a woman. Ha ha, see? And then, and then you're like, and then you start talking about, you know, banging this animal or something like that. People are like, oh, you're banging an animal? You're like, no, it's a woman. It's a woman. I call her a woman. I even put a little, I even put a hijab on her, see? That, that, you're that, that's I know that sounds insane to you. It that's what you sound like to us when you think a prepubescent little girl is is a fully grown adult woman. That's insane. Did, I, I recently had a debate with Daniel Kikichu, as everyone already knows. Uh, you did really when? <laughs> okay. And I only hear you talk uh, about it. I only I hear you talk about it every seven seconds. <laughs> I, well, I didn't see a debate. I just saw you beating on someone endlessly. I don't know what you're talking about. I was yeah. beating a child, actually. Yeah. Um, people, you 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 actually made people feel bad for Daniel Hakikachu, <laughs> the world's leading defender of child marriage. That is something. <laughs> But here, here's the thing. Um, will, reading... someone, will someone help that poor man? It's like, guys, that's Daniel Hakikachu. Do you know how horrible this guy is? Yeah. <laughs> reading uh, reading um, Muslim Cowboys tweets here uh, reminds me very much of what Daniel Hakikachu said to me during the during the debate when I when I said um, when I called him a defender of pedophilia. Uh, and said, you know, child marriage. He said, uh, you misrepresented me because I don't, uh, you, you said, I'm a, I'm a, I support pedophilia, but I support marriage. So, 
Yeah, marriage what he to little kids. Said is, I don't support pedophilia. I support marriage to little children. To children yeah. because they're not children; they're adults. <laughs> yeah, you could call. Yeah, you could call. You could call that committed pedophilia, right? This is not. You're not just. You're not just banging a little kid and then you know ignoring the kid. Uh, you're actually marrying the little kid, and then of course when the kid gets a couple years old, you go, "Ah, it's all grown up," and then you you divorce the kid. Disgusting. Oh, it's Ugh, a grandma. You're too I old. Think, you're too old. I you're think twelve. We need to- I think we need to keep an eye on some of these converts to Islam. I mean, they, yeah, they convert to Islam and they immediately are like, hey, guys, marrying children so much fun. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hmm, I wonder what, why they became a Muslim. Maybe they saw there's an entire group of people that would defend their own pedophilia. It's quite an interesting correlation. They're like, uh-huh. they're like I testify that there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. All right, guys. So now let's talk about child. Let's talk about banging them kids, eh? <laughs> the moment they're in. Like, just let's go right to that. <laughs> All right, a cu- couple more. <laughs> I mean, that's going to be the requirement, right? They always bring these converts up on stage. All right, repeat after me. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah. Muhammadur Rasulullah. It's okay to have sex with little kids. It's okay to have sex with little kids. Now go defend it. Go defend it. And if anyone, if anyone objects, just lie and say, Rebecca was three. <laughs> Mary was 12? Mary was 12. According to the Catholic Encyclopedia, just don't look it up. Just trust me on it. Trust me, bro. Source of trust me, bro. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's read a couple more of his tweets here. To notice, to say he's 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 doing the same thing over and over again. So check out these uh, last couple of tweets. A woman is a woman is a woman is a woman is a woman when they hit puberty. Now this is gonna come back to to bite him in his cowboy hat because. Aisha hadn't reached puberty and Islam doesn't require this. So if he's saying a woman is a woman when they hit puberty and Aisha hadn't reached puberty, why in the name of common sense is he calling her a woman? Uh, He says, making a certain age a number is arbitrary and makes no sense. Right. What makes sense is just taking little girls and calling them women. IP, Hmm. is it arbitrary to make a certain age (laughs) a number? Yeah. No. no. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so, oh, yeah, get, yeah, 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 get, yeah, yeah, get, get, get. From a legal. Oh, go ahead. Okay, so yeah, from a legal standpoint, you we wait till they complete puberty, and mm-hmm. they complete puberty 15 to 17. Yeah. So once, so instead of having to have every girl go through some sort of like scientific investigation, we just go, okay, 18 uh, fits. You've had a lot of mental development. You still have a little bit more, but you need to start getting used to being an adult. So you're going to be granted the status of adulthood <laughs> uh, with some minor, you know, things like you can't drink, you can't rent cars, for example, things like this. It's going to be much harder to get a loan, that kind of stuff. But we basically grant it after basically the stages of puberty are mm-hmm. complete on average. It's 18. It's not an arbitrary age. It makes yeah. total sense from mm-hmm. a scientific standpoint. Yeah. And that's, uh, yeah, when, when we talk about that, that girls can and do develop at different rates and so on, um, you can, you can point that out and say, you know, any particular number, you could argue it somewhat, right? Like you could say, what if we went to 17 and a half? Or what if we went to 17? Or what if we went to 19 or 20 or something like that? There is some wiggle room in there, but that doesn't mean it's arbitrary. That's not arbitrary. That's not just, ah, let's, uh, you know, pick one. Okay. Mm, I'll pick this one. Where'd my finger? Uh, oh, 18. Yeah, we're going with 18. No, it's not. It's taking it's taking a bunch of data into account and saying, okay, there's a little wiggle room on if we try to get specific, but in general, this is a very very safe spot to start making laws around. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's based on it's based on knowledge. The the the, the, the things that that are are uh, you know our, our Muslim friends are saying are, are are all based on ignorance, I, ignorance at best, deception at worst, because sometimes they're they're just they're they're just lying. Um, all right. So a couple more tweets here. Uh, so someone had said only a Muslim pedophile would say something like this. It's disgusting raping children. And he says, it's funny how these kufar equate marriage and rape. <laughs> I oh knew my. they were as dumb as crap, but this is next level. Oh, he dropped the R word. We need a, we need, not- a, we need a replacement word for like a uh, motard or something like that. Do- do the Dalaganists not understand the concept of marital rape or statutory no, rape? No, or the, no, or they, no, they don't. I've seen I've seen scholars mocking this idea. Muslim scholars mocking this idea. Uh, I saw I saw a guy. He's, he's speaking to a crowd, and he goes, uh, he goes, "Did you know that in America you can rape your wife?" And I thought, "What? No, you can't rape your wife." And he goes, 
how can you rape someone when you have rights over their their and it's like oh i thought he was saying it's allowed to rape your wife he's saying the concept of being able to rape your wife exists whereas over here we have no such concept for them As rape it should be. It, rape is having sex against someone's will when you're not allowed to have sex with that person right if you actually have the right to the person's uh sexual reproductive organs they have no they have no right to uh to reject that and so yeah so yeah they would say no what are you what are you even talking about marital rape what are you talking about again we got to keep an eye on these converts to islam they come out and they're promoting child marriage and pedophilia and they're also they also want to own women so it's not rape because they can do whatever they want with their property in their view this is this is absolutely ridiculous if you don't acknowledge marital rape you shouldn't be allowed to get married yeah um and especially, especially, especially when you're tying this to kids, because notice, I mean, the general reasoning would be, you know, a six year old, a seven year old, they're not, they're not in a position to consent. And Islam doesn't require, doesn't require them to consent. Their parents consent for them. And what was, what, what was that uh, AP that Fareed said when he's mocking this idea that we are accusing them of raping children? How is it child rape when there is parental consent? His objection to us pointing out that a, a little girl has no clue what you're doing and you toss her on a bed and bang her. Uh, his response is, but if you had parental consent, then how can it be rape? Notice it, it doesn't matter what the girl is thinking or whether she is capable of consenting. Her parents can say, hey, you go bang my daughter. It's fine. I say it's OK. And notice, notice this is the creepy part. There are lots of parents who would say, oh, I don't want I don't want some guy banging my little daughter. But once they become conditioned to mindlessly accept whatever the Dawah guys say and Muhammad's pattern of conduct and so on, it makes it acceptable. So that's how you actually end up with, oh, OK, the local sheikh, he wants uh, he wants my seven year old as his next wife. Who, who am I to say no? It's right. With it. Even if it feels a little weird, even if I keep getting these weird ideas from uh, Western movies I'm watching that that's not a good idea, even though uh, I, I saw on the Internet, because no one's going to say that in my school here in, in this Muslim country. But I read on the Internet that it's actually dangerous for the kid. Mm, nope. Who's who's right? Well, the, the, my my uh, my my mom, my shake has to be right. So I'll just go with that. Sick stuff. This is guys. In other words, what we're talking about. This is not just like critiquing Islam. This is like real world endangering little kids relevant yes. stuff. Yes. All right. Uh, how is it murder when there is parental consent? How is it having sex with a goat if you have the shepherd's consent? Dude, wait, mm -hmm. AP, I mean, like Muslims are very anti-abortion, aren't they? Aren't Muslims very anti-abortion? Um, it doesn't after, play that after a certain role. stage. But there, okay, there's but like, agreement. yeah. But there's parental consent that they can have an abortion, apparently. So why are they against it? If if the mother has consent consents to the abortion, mm -hmm. parental and, consent. Fareed should be all happy with abortion because it's parental oh, consent wow. to kill. And, why and, are you asking questions? <laughs> and why why the inconsistency? If if that's all that's required, parental consent, then what about the what about when the parent says, uh, hey, uh, my my uh, little boy wants to be a little girl, and I consent. Oh. There you go. There you go. Interesting stuff. So, you, you, you know what's so funny? So um, th there were these bunch of protests in the UK about um, you know um, uh, at certain schools, these schools teaching uh, kids about um, you know respecting or tolerating uh, LGBT and things like that. And there were these massive protests by Muslims uh, that were very specific about uh, they teach our children, they teach yeah. children. Do, do, you be learning these things? do you remember it's the crazy. mantra? Do you remember the mantra that they were reciting? They were the, what they put on all their signs was let kids be kids. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let kids be kids. <laughs> All Wait, these kids are all these little girls are potential uh, are potential brides. What you're treating them like like they're capable of of uh, starting families and so on. They are adults through and through. Isn't this wild, no, guys? So what, what we're pointing out here is Muslims. If every single thing that you're saying in defense of child marriage could be used to 100 percent defend uh, all all the trans stuff that's going on, then, then why, why are you complaining about the trans stuff? And expecting us to take your criticism seriously. Yeah. Um, all right. Two more. Two more quick tweets from this guy. Quick tweets. Tweets from this guy. Muslim cowboy. Nope. Children are off limits. So guy asked him. Okay. So it's okay to marry children now. Nope. Children are off limits. The key is defining. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. David. David. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. 
Actually, yeah, finish, finish that and I'm going to say something. So he says, nope, children are off limits. The key is defining childhood, which apparently you can do however you want. You could just say anything uh, makes you an adult. Uh, it's different at different times and locations. And let me just let me just read this last one so we can be done with his tweets. Uh, the Muslim cowboy said, the disbelievers think we should be ashamed of some things in Islam. There is not a single thing our prophet did that I myself wouldn't do. If my uh, prophet... Oh, if my oh. prophet if my prophet beheaded between six and nine hundred Jews, then so would I, because my prophet did it. This is submission. This is the way. So notice the reason the reason I'm pointing this out, this uh this uh tweet right here, is this guy does not know what his prophet unless he's lying, he doesn't actually know what his prophet did. He thinks his pro he thinks that what Islam requires is that a girl reaches puberty because he heard it from someone like Ali Dawa. He's about to find out that's not what Islam teaches at all. Show me that. Show me that. Show me that from Muhammad. Show me that from the Quran. You can't because it doesn't exist. Um, but he's saying everything that his prophet did, he would do. Okay, Muslim cowboy, what your prophet actually did was marry and have sex with a prepubescent girl. That's what he did. So you're saying you... Out of, uh, out, of, out of a heart and a spirit of submission, which is what Islam is, you would do the exact same thing. You heard it here, folks. All right. What do you have, AP? I forgot. No, you forgot. No, must, uh, have been, must have been no. a really important point. <laughs> no, the thing is, um, especially in, in one of those tweets, uh, third to last, I believe, uh, he made it very clear, which is that um, uh, a, a, as soon as a child or as soon as a woman, he said, I think, uh, hits puberty, she is a woman. Um, so here is here is the thing. Often when we engage in, in debates, uh, people take the, the the words of their dawa propagandists as uh as truth especially if they cite a source without even reading the source They're like look it's cited the source it's cited the source it's accurate look we are right we are we are on the right side now if you took this guy put him in front of uh of, I don't know, anybody, and just bombarded him with study after study after study after study, or even just opened a, a website to him, which clearly says that, uh, no, <laughs> a child that hits puberty is not a woman. Uh, it only means that her development has begun. It is in the mm -hmm. beginning stage, and she is only considered a woman after her development is completed. If, if you showed that to them, because uh, his statement is in clear contradiction with, um, with, with science, with basic biology as we know it, would these people actually change their minds? What, what, what do you think? Do you really... do you do, does anybody believe that this Muslim cowboy, if he saw uh, definitions from all kinds of authorities on this matter that said, no, uh, a girl that his puberty is not a woman, would he actually change his mind and say, well, you know what? Okay, I guess I was wrong. I must no. change my no. now. No, that tweet he just put up said it all. This is just about submission to whatever yeah. Islam yeah. says, whatever Muhammad exactly. cares about those pesky facts. Yeah. We've exactly. got the conclusion Muhammad was right, and all the evidence that goes against it, we're just going to ignore because we have just they're going to cite the studies that are, you know or misrepresent the studies in terms of Daniel Kikachu to fit the conclusion we want. It's never exactly. going to be about facts. It doesn't matter how many girls they harm. It doesn't matter how how mm -hmm. much death they cause from early childbirth. It's all about whatever Muhammad wanted. That's real submission. That submission. You, turn your brain off when you go down that direction. That's what they do. And that is Islam for you. Yeah. All That's right, it. now, now let's uh, let's talk about pigs real quick. <laughs> Wait, I thought we were. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're talking <laughs> different kind of pigs, nice. different kind of pigs. Nice, nice, um, nice. So, in response, a woman is a woman when they hit puberty. It's the same thing Rosie said. As soon as you get puberty, as soon as you hit puberty, not notice, not when you finish puberty, when you hit it, when you start it. Puberty is a process that takes several years. As soon as you start puberty, as soon as you start it, you're a fully grown woman and it's time, it's, it's totally, totally acceptable to start having sex with you. Let's talk about pigs, because I was talking about this with, uh, 
well, it was a, it was a group of people, um, but uh, Too Many Marys. Too Many Marys. Mary from Too Many Marys. She's been on, she's been on with us before. Um, but she was, uh, she was pointing out that it's understood among pig farmers. She's like, she goes, uh, she goes, even, even, even on farms, they understand that as soon as an animal goes into heat, you don't start that. You have to wait until the animal continues developing. And I said, uh, I said, really, uh, you know, show me that with the pigs. And a few seconds later, she sent, she sent me an article. She just, she just pulled, she just pulled one up real quick. And so I go to, I go to it and, uh, let, let's check this out. Let's check this out. Be careful with your words. You just said goat. Yeah, I know. People Sorry, Dawa guys. Private. Close your ears when I say things like that. Um, <laughs> uh, so we have uh, this. So this entire thing is on taking care of uh, pigs and then you get into uh, reproducing and so on. All right. So notice down here towards the towards the bottom of this section. Let's pull it up. When when's the pig ready for breeding? Oh, that's the question, right? That's that's what uh, Muslims are asking. That's what. Uh, the Muslim cowboy is obsessed with when he's talking about little wow, when are the little girls ready for breeding? Ha -ha! Old enough to bleed, old enough to breed, right? Now watch this. Most breeds of pig reach puberty at five months of age. So they develop much faster than human beings. Uh, but some, for example, the Chinese pig come into heat for the first time at three months of age when they have enough good feed and water. So pigs uh, reach, pu reach puberty between three and five months after they're born. Three to five months. So very, very quick. It does not take them long. Now watch what they say. The pig should not be used for breeding when she comes into heat for the first time. It is wiser to allow her to grow for another month before using her for breeding. Now notice this doesn't sound like a long time. To us, what another month? Okay, well, maybe you should say, you know, girls could wait another month. We're talking about pigs here who develop much, much, much more rapidly. So notice, if a pig, uh, you know, grows up over a period of five months mostly and is in heat for the first time, five five months, a month is twenty percent of its lifespan, right? A, a month is twenty percent of its five month life. So you're saying, hey, even though this pig even though this pig is biologically ready to get pregnant, wait another 20% of the life that this pig has already lived. So if it took five months to get there, wait another month. If it took three months to mature and you say, wait another month, now you're talking about wait another third of the life that it's already lived. So you're, you're talking about, in other words, for a pig that develops very rapidly, waiting another month is waiting a very, very long time. Uh, it's not a long time to us, but that that's you're allowing that pig to grow a bunch. You're allowing that pig to grow a bunch. So what am I saying here? Guys, let's think about this. Let's think about this. These are these are experienced pig farmers. And it's understood among pig farmers. Yes, your pig is in heat for the first time. That pig can get pregnant. That pig can get pregnant. So do you want to start breeding your pig as soon as the pig is ready to get pregnant? What do the pig farmers say? They say, no, do not do that. Why? Because the pig is still growing and developing. You should wait a little longer. Now, notice if you're talking, if a, if a pig is five months old and you say, wait another month, you're saying, wait another 20% of its life. If a, if a human being which develops much more slowly. Let's say a girl gets uh, gets her first period at the age of 10. And you were to apply the same reasoning that a pig farmer applies to the pig, you would say, wait another 20% of her life. So if she's 10 years old, 20% of her life would be two years. You'd say, wait another two years before you're even thinking about this. Wait another two years before you're thinking about breeding with this girl. David, are you, are you saying that... Uh this is proof that pig farmers treat their animals better than Muslims treat their daughters. I, I, I would not, I would not say that in general about Muslims because there are Muslims who treat their daughters way better than that. I'm saying right. what's being advocated by Ali Dawa, by the Muslim cowboy, by, um, Cow. Rosie, by Rosie, by Daniel Hakikachu, what they are saying, the things that they are saying 
Yes, pig farmers treat pigs better than the than these dais treat their daughters and wives. Guys, get your minds around that, right? The pig farmer is saying just because that that pig is capable of getting pregnant right now does not mean you should rush into breeding that pig. You need to wait. Let the pig grow more. Let the pig's birth canal widen a bit because it's just safer for the pig. It's safer for the offspring. It's better for everyone involved if you just wait longer. And, and oh, and, and, David would be wrong. We don't even and, like pigs. And, we like goats. And doctors, <laughs> doctors say the same thing about human children. Hey, even if a girl gets her period by age, whatever, that doesn't mean she should. You should be thinking about breeding right then. You need to wait to let her finish maturing. And the Dawa clowns say, No, 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 you don't. The, the, the moment, the moment you see any sign, any sign of anything. Re remotely resembling puberty, it's time to start smashing. When there are signs, you you mentioned like ten, and you wait twenty percent more. Like that's what with the pigs. But again, the science for the development of girls, you need to wait till at least eighteen for the development of the birth canal to be. Oh yeah, I was I was just I was just saying, hey, let's keep it let's keep it parallel with pigs. Okay, so mm -hmm. if if you were, if if the Muslim cowboy was as concerned for a marriage partner as a pig farmer is for a pig, then he would not be saying what he's saying. He would say, okay, even if, you know, even if she gets her first period here, we should at least wait a couple of years. If I'm treating the, my bride as well as, I, as well as a pig farmer would treat a pig, and what's he saying? I'm the Muslim cowboy? No, I treat little girls I'll call them women, but they're little girls. I treat them worse. They are they are less. They have less value. They are of less concern to me than a pig is to a pig farmer. Welcome to my and religion. Do you want to convert? And just to say, I, I am willing to work with any Muslims that are disgusted by this. Me too. Uh, me too. If, if there are Muslims out I, there I'm that not, are that are much that are much smarter and understand how bad child marriage is, how horrible this is. And they agree that girls should wait to become women past the age of 18 before they're married off and expected to have children. I'm willing to work with any Muslim who is on the same page. This I'm is not. just going against- We don't care. What, we're not talking about you, AP. No one's going to work yeah. with you because you're mean. <laughs> People would like to work with inspiring philosophy. So because he's not. It, I would really love to hear Muslims actually start to fight these nut jobs who want to- who, we're becoming the poster boys of Islam. Don't you, don't you, do you guys really want these guys representing you or do you want to stand with us and yes. fight this, this human rights crisis around the world? This, uh, no. these girls that are constantly being put in these horrible situations where their children are put in horrible situations and a lot of them end up dead. Whose side do you want to be on? It's, it's horrifying to me that at this point, most of the Muslims that speak out and get the most attention are the ones that are in favor of that. That's scary. So when are the more sane Muslims going to come out and start actually representing what they would say is a much more intellectual side of Islam? Because I don't see it. You see, all they care about is how the women feel. They never care about how the men feel. Yes. When they can't have sex with the little girl. Whatever. Yes. We're all horny. We're super horny. How can you ask us to wait? Mm. How, why, why would I wait until something, until mm -hmm. she's older? If as soon as I see a little bit of hair, I will get ready. I already waited enough. Well, uh, you know what this does is it, it, it teaches men to not have any self-control. This is what Daniel Hukikichu's argument was in my debate mm -hmm. with him. It's like the moment you have any sort of sexual desires, get married and start having sex. That is incredibly stupid. If a child is suffering from rage issues, we don't put them in the army and tell them to go sh shoot up civilians. We teach them to control his rage. It's good that when when children start feeling these desires, we the first thing they should learn is self-control. Hey, you're getting these desires, you're going through puberty, learn to control them. Don't let them control you. The Dawagandas solution is no, no, let them control you. The moment you wanna have sex, you should just start having sex with whatever you want. Just go around, just make sure you're married. One or two wives, who cares? It leads to a culture that is devoid of self-control. This is horrible.
But then yeah. the kickage already already told everyone, including you, IP, uh, that is that in, in the West, because uh, because in the West there is no proper child marriage stuff. Uh, in the West, is uh, kids at the age of six, seven, eight, nine, what do they do? <laughs> they they go out and start having sex everywhere everywhere all the time when there, there is a huge epidemic of kids out there eight-year-olds having sex everywhere at school uh which is why we have to bring these beautiful values of child marriage back that's uh, what's happening in the world here according to daniel hikikachu mm -hmm. yeah it's incredibly uh, stupid hey, speaking of daniel hikikachu let's uh let's watch a couple short uh, very short uh, clips from our uh, our dawa friends but uh here's a famous clip if you can start uh, fertilizing a female as soon as she becomes, as soon as she's showing signs of an imminent um, fertility, the period, menarche, then that will maximize because you secured the female right at the beginning. Secure the, start the female! Of so you can still have sex before you start maximizing fertility, right? When the body is physically okay. mature, according to Islamic law. Do you know law. what precocious puberty When the body is physically mature, they have, and they have no idea what constitutes a, an actual well, physical, physically mature girl. He, he's refuting himself here. Yeah. yeah, that's what he just did. He just went on this big log rant about how child marriage is about maximizing the fertility window. And I asked him a simple question. He goes, yeah, you guess you can have them before they even can start having children. You can start <laughs> raping them before they have children. So he just refuted himself. It's like, what are you doing? He doesn't even he doesn't even see that he could watch his he could rewatch this whole thing and he wouldn't even see it like the first thing that pops into our heads here, which is oh, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. That's contradictory. He's refuting himself. It's not about fertility to him. Uh, he wouldn't even understand it. AP, I bet he hasn't even gotten a new laptop yet. It probably still says Predator on it. <laughs> of course it says Predator. What else is going to say? Nice guy. Come on. <laughs> laptop gives him away. Guys, you don't want to look at his search history. Hey, whoever's debating uh, Daniel next needs uh, needs to just come up with a little sticker and write sex on it and just go stick that on when he's not looking. <laughs> <laughs> right above Predator. <laughs> All right. Yes, I do. Okay. What is it? It means going, starting puberty uh, unusually early, like Can beyond you have, averages. Is there anything in Islam that prevents you from, in a man, marrying a five-year-old that started precocious puberty? I like your contempt there. No, marriage uh, can happen. Five-year-old. Uh, like you can arrange a marriage even as an infant, but that doesn't mean that sex is allowed. But could, could, a, uh, could a man have a marriage to a five-year-old consummated if she started precocious puberty? If she starts showing signs of physical maturity, then yes, that's permissible. As I say, that's what about the principle. Age four? If there, is if signs. there are signs, yeah. And guys, again, this could be, um, this could be anything. This could be, uh, you know, pubic hair, breast budding, anything like that. Uh, but in the sources, uh, we had a full discussion of this with uh, with too many Marys. But uh, what their sources are actually, because this you don't find this is this doesn't come from the Quran and the Hadith. This comes from like Muslim uh, schools of thought and schools of jurisprudence and so on. But uh, they can their concern when they're talking about uh, signs of maturity. One, they were they were worried about a girl being too small that you're going to crush her or break her in sex. Uh, and two, they were worried uh, that if the the girls. Um, if her vagina is too small, then you're actually going to tear her, giving her a fistula, uh -huh. rupturing, rupturing the area between uh, the, the this is this is their language. They talk about the two holes becoming one hole. Um, so this is what they're actually concerned about. And this is this is what. Oh, OK. So, you know, if, if you, you don't want to do that, you don't want to end up with that situation. That's what they're concerned about. They're not concerned about the girl reaching puberty or, or anything else. Um, so yeah, but let's go ahead and hear the rest of Daniel here. Um, so this is something that becomes biologically impossible because precocious I puberty, have a there are shows no- I it goes as early as 11 months. All right, well, that's something that the parents would not, uh, the, see the thing about Islamic marriage is that parents are involved at these ages. And when you look at the marriage- he, He's making, he does not know how horrifyingly evil what he's saying is right now. So yeah, I'm so, trying, so, you, you can see me in the chair. I'm trying to control myself because I was so pissed. Yeah, uh, but I'm not even talking about the, the child marriage. I'm talking about the, the, what this added thing of, but you know, parents are involved. You mean the parents that are brainwashed by guys like you? The parents who are brainwashed by guys who are defending child marriage, they're the ones, they're the ones who are going to decide when their child is ready for 
uh, to be married off and they've got you guys talking to them and telling them that it's totally okay. That, uh, that, I mean, I mean, at least Daniel's waiting. (laughs) Then this is what's about to be even more horrifying. Daniel, as awful as he is right now, is much better than Muhammad and, and Allah. He massively better world of difference as evil as what he's saying is right now. He's massively better than his God and his prophet, because they don't even care about the signs of signs of, uh, uh, signs of puberty. They don't care about any of that stuff. Um, so Daniel's actually better, but look at what he's saying. So it's the, they're the Dawah guys. And now all the Dawah guys are running around celebrating child marriage. Yes, we're based. You see, we're based. We're saying child marriage is good. It's great. And these are the people who are influencing the Ummah on when you should give away your girls for marriage. And these are the guys, ah, so it doesn't matter. She's five or six. Of course, you can have sex with a five-year-old. And well, he's Daniel Hakikachu. He knows so much about Islam. I guess, I guess it is okay. Okay, Daniel, take my five-year-old. I, th- this this guy this 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 disgusting uh, idiot this piece of filth pedophilia advocate possibly pedophile guy is sitting there and actually advocating for the idea that uh, so when IP brings up um, eleven month olds and says uh, studies show it goes as early as eleven months his response to that is really. And he obviously didn't think that through because later on, uh, when he's in a conversation with me, for example, he's like, no, that's not what I said. That's not what I said. He's denying it. But right there, he's clearly saying uh, this is why in Islam it is up to the parents. The parents are in charge. Uh, what, What he's advocating for is that possibly... If there is a case where uh, a family, where parents have a child that is 11 months old, if in that case, hypothetically speaking, and that uh, 11 month old shows signs of development, according to Daniel Kikiju, the parents can go like, oh, you know what? I, uh, I think she's ready. I think she's yeah. ready. Let, let's marry her to, to this to this very nice guy that we know who is, by the way, 50 years old well, uh, and to tell him he can have, he can start having sex with her. This guy, I mean, we have parents out there, humans out there that are that do disgusting things to themselves, to to others, to their own children. We have we have parents that starve their own children, that uh, beat and kill and hurt their own children, that just want to get rid of their own, chil- own children, no matter what. We have uh, parents out there that are that are so brainwashed that they do terrible things to their children because they don't even realize that it's bad. And this guy really wants to give the agency over that life to parents in in such high, uh, with, with, with such control. Is this guy delusional? Does he not realize how messed up this is? Well, I mean, not even that, oh, that AP. I mean, there are many, child marriage results often from poverty. So a lot of what happens in the Middle East right now is, Parents are in horrible situations where they can't even feed their children and they don't want to see their children starve. So instead of like sending them to like an orphanage or trying to get someone to adopt them, because you can't adopt in Islam, they have these sick, rich guys come in Mm -hmm. and they say, well, I'll just take the daughter from you and marry her and take care of her. What are the parents going to do in that situation? Well, because their Dawagandists have been lying to them, telling them that it's okay, that this is okay with Muhammad did it with nine. So why can't you just sell your nine year old instead of having to try to find food for her? And it leads to all sorts of harm and horrible things happen to these girls. So sometimes it's not even just evil parents, it's parents that are poor and they got no other mm-hmm. options. And they can't just, you know, have them be adopted by an, a, a better family. No, no, no. They got to be married. So. Welcome to Islam. This is what happens here. So this is what often happens in these poor Muslim countries. And often what we the research shows is when people get lifted out of poverty, child marriage decreases. So I think there's a lot of good parents that are mm-hmm. uh, pushing their girls into child marriages because they just are poor. They don't have the money right now. And of course, you just can't adopt. What, what, a, what an odd thing. We need the in, money, honey. Yeah. And keep in mind, um, if you didn't have the idea in Islam that it's okay to have sex with a little girl, if you didn't have that idea, you could still you could still work around uh, the guy having sex with a little girl. So in other words, you could say, hey, we're going to have an arranged marriage. So, yes, we are poor. We're going to have an arranged marriage with my you know, six-year-old, seven-year-old or something like that. We're going to have an arranged marriage where you're going to provide for the girl so the girl's not no longer starving and so on, but she's going to stay with us until she's, until she's ready. And then, and then she'll be your wife. Uh, I would not be, you know, 
I would not be a, a, a total fan of that arrangement, but it would be way, way better. Why aren't they doing? Why aren't these guys, these rich guys who are going in there and snatching up child brides, uh, why aren't they waiting until the girls mature? Because they know they could get a, they know they could get away with marrying kids in Islam because you've got the Dawah guys and their sheikhs and imams all defending uh, sex with little children. Speaking of Dawah guys. We've we've seen this uh, Daniel clip a million times, but there's a here's another famous one here. If my daughter reached the age of nine years old, I would say you are ready. What's it like? Please, you are ready to get married. Yeah, you are ready to get married. You are ready to get married. You are ready to get married if she gets menstruation at nine years old. Keep again, keep in mind as repulsive as that is. He's talking about his own daughter there. As repulsive as that is, he is massively better than his God and. His prophet. One final clip here from Muhammad Hijab, famous clip. Hey, uh, inspiring philosophy. I know that you sometimes have obligations, so you normally don't go for very, very long live streams. So uh, just let me know whenever you got to head out and, and uh, uh, we'll be good. But here we have Muhammad Hijab. If you look just at the Quran, you will get the indication that you can have sexual intercourse with a five year old. No. The reason why it's haram to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old is not found in the Quran at all. If you just read the Quran, it is halal. It would just it would be halal to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. In Surah Al-Talaq, chapter 65, verse 4, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us who you can divorce and who you cannot divorce. And then he says, Wallahi lam yahidn. Wallahi lam yahidn. And the ones who had never been pubescent before and by the way this is very important yeah i want all muslims to be aware of this the reason why we don't have sexual intercourse with five-year-olds and six-year-olds and seven-year-olds or whatever is not because of puberty hmm that's why i wanted to play this clip uh, wait a minute what did he say it's not because of puberty let me back this up i know what you're saying ap because he's about to say what's it what do you say but uh, let's back that thing up real quick. He's saying this has nothing to do with puberty. With five-year-olds and six-year-olds and seven-year-olds or whatever, is not because of puberty. Wait a minute, what did you say? It's not because of puberty because that verse in the Quran actually says, Lam They never had puberty before. You can't go around that. The Quran doesn't say... Notice he just said... The verse, Surah 65, verse 4, which we'll be looking at because apparently the Muslim cowboy never read it or at least never understood it. But uh, Hijab is pointing out that this is talking about marrying, having sex with, and divorcing girls all before they've reached puberty. And therefore, puberty cannot be the requirement for marriage. And so, you, I mean, it would be pretty easy for someone to make a video. Muhammad Hijab destroys the Muslim cowboy on child marriage or something like that. <laughs> uh, but let's go ahead and let uh, Hijab here break his case down more. Doesn't say anywhere in the Quran that the woman has to be pubescent. Correct. I dare you to find one verse in the Quran where it says you're not allowed to marry someone based on harm or you're not allowed to have sexual intercourse based on harm or you're not allowed to marry someone based on puberty. So, if you're so notice, he, there's an entire crowd of Muslims there. He's challenging them all. Show me where the Quran says you have to wait uh, for puberty or show me where the Quran says you have to wait until you're not even harming the little girl. Show me somewhere where it says, hey, if the girl, if, if what you're doing is going to endanger the life of this girl, you should do it. Show me that. He's challenging the crowd. No one can come up with anything. I'm alone, no, you're allowed to have no, sexual intercourse no, with five-year-olds. Get me one verse in the Quran which says the woman has to be pubescent. No. One verse. I want one verse in the Quran from the beginning of the book to the end of the book which says that she has to be perfect. So, okay, so that makes it halal from your perspective. From your perspective, it's halal. You know, in the Quran, it says, It says you're not allowed to marry your mom. It says you're not allowed to marry your sister, your auntie. Where does it say you're not allowed to marry a, a creepy person? I'm looking for one verse that you, you can say, you pinpoint it and say, this is where it says, prepubescent marriage or whatever is not allowed. So if you're Quran alone, you're still towards pedophilia and a severe type of pedophilia, a wife abuse, a severe type of wife abuse. Uh, all right. So there you heard it from uh, Muhammad Hijab uh, himself. Just to be clear, for the millionth time, whenever we play this clip, uh, we don't, uh, even though they love to misrepresent everyone else, we don't want to misrepresent them. Muhammad Hijab is not saying that it's okay to have sex with a five-year-old girl. Well, he's no, saying, he just said it. What are you talking about? Just he's say saying it. that if you just go with the Quran, you'd say it's okay to have sex with a five-year-old. But 
Excuses, David. You just said it. There's this harm principle, you know, you know, don't, you know, don't, don't harm people. And so you could apply that to girls and say, well, it's dangerous for a five-year-old. Uh, therefore, you should be waiting. Now, what he doesn't explain, what he doesn't explain is, again, his Muslim scholars have discussed what they're, what they mean by trying to avoid harming a little girl. What are you actually waiting for? And again, what they're really talking about is turning the two holes into one hole. That's what they're talking about. That's the harm they're concerned about. They're not, they're not concerned. In other words, they're not concerned about, oh, this is really going to hurt the girl, or this is going to increase the chances of, uh, of, you know, the girl dying during childbirth or something. They're not even talking, they're not even talking about stuff like that. Um, so that's, a, that's the situation, but notice what, what I was drawing attention to there was Muhammad Hijab pointing out that puberty is not a requirement. It's not just not a requirement in the Quran. It's not a requirement anywhere. There's not a requirement in Islam to wait for puberty. That's not what you're waiting for. Muhammad didn't wait for puberty with Aisha. The Quran specifically says you can marry, have sex with, and divorce girls all before they've reached puberty. Our friend, the Muslim cowboy, is saying once a girl reaches puberty, she's a woman. Now, that is false. We've exposed why that is false. Puberty is a process. It takes several years. You don't just, oh, as soon as you start puberty, you're a fully mature, grown woman. That's insane and idiotic. So on one hand, he he has no clue what he's talking about as far as uh, biology is concerned, but he also has no clue what he's talking about with when it, as to what Islam says. He just doesn't. He just doesn't know. He's ignorant or he's deceptive. But I'm assuming since he's uh, I don't know how long he's been a Muslim, we're giving him the benefit of the doubt and saying that he's completely ignorant and he doesn't know what his own sources say. Uh, any thoughts before we go? Some of the sources, maybe we should go through some super chats here because we have a ton of them. Yeah, I would say go to some super chats, but yeah, I would just say like, you know, the, the, the stupid thing about the whole the Muhammad job clip is he's going, guys, we can't have this extreme form of pedophilia. We need a more mild form yeah, of pedophilia. That's exactly what he said. Hadith. Like, come on, everyone. We're not that bad. Yeah, we like pedophilia and all this stuff, but we don't want to be that bad. Like it's, it doesn't, it, it's better, but it's still just not yeah. out of in the ballpark of being good. It's still off into the evil territory. Like, what yeah. are you doing? Yeah. And that's that's what really sucks. It's like what Ali Dawa is saying. So notice you have uh, you have what the Quran says and there's just no requirement. It, it wouldn't matter if she's two. He's talking about five. It wouldn't matter. If she's two, according to the Quran. Um, so you have the Quran. And if you have just the position of the Quran, it's there, there's there's no requirement. There's no requirement. You're not waiting for anything. You could just have sex with a with a with a little prepubescent girl. Then you have Muhammad Hijab who's saying, "No, we're not waiting for puberty, but we're waiting to avoid uh, a, a severe type of uh, harm." Right? Uh, like he doesn't he doesn't say this. He doesn't spell it out. But they're worried about turning the two holes into one hole. Then you've got Ali Dawa and uh, the Muslim cowboy who say, "No, no, no. We wait for puberty. We wait for puberty." And then you have people who would, who would wait at, for some point beyond that. But notice, it's like degrees of evil. It's like Muhammad Hijab, what he's saying is child marriage, and it's sick, and it's twisted, and it's evil, but it's better than what his God says. And what, what Ali Dawa and the Muslim cowboy are saying is sick and evil and twisted, but it's better than Hijab's position, and it's better than uh, than the position of the Quran. Little, little side note, IP, because I don't know if you've seen us discuss this before, but uh, one of the great uh, ironies in this is Hijab is saying he specifically says, according to the Quran, it would be halal. It would be halal to have sex with a five year old. You go outside of the Quran to to Muslim scholars, later Muslim scholars who apply a harm principle and uh, the, you, applying that harm principle. OK, you shouldn't have sex with with a with a five year old unless the five year old is, you know, a little little chubby on the chubby side. That, that's what they talk about. She's on the chubby side and she can bear the weight of a man and things. Uh, these are these are actually in their in their rulings. Um, but uh, hijab is saying so if we go to these other guys, we find out that it's haram and he calls it haram. He says the reason it's haram has nothing to do with puberty. It's it's because of harm. That's why. But note what he, what he just did there. He said, OK, according to Allah, it's halal. But these guys have have added some things that would make it haram. It's halal. It's it's permissible in Islam to have sex with a five. According to the Quran, to have sex with a five year old. But it's not we don't consider it permissible. Why? Because of 
later scholars who came along and commented on this. Why is this a problem? Well, Muhammad, Muhammad said that whenever you let a human being overrule Allah on what's halal and haram, you are worshiping that human being. You're committing shirk. So this is Muhammad. You just had Muhammad Hijab committing shirk, advocating shirk, saying, no, guys, if you just listen to Allah, you're in so much trouble because you're going to think that's halal, according to Allah. So you need to listen to these later guys to correct Allah on what's allowed and what's not allowed. And so according to Muhammad, Muhammad Hijab worships Muhammad and the Hadith collectors and the later scholars and so on. So pretty wild stuff. Pretty, pretty, nice. pretty wild stuff. I like their religion, their new religion. Yeah, it's, it's pretty uh, it's pretty powerful. All right, let's do some, uh, gosh, we got a bunch of Super Chats and I haven't read any yet. We'll go through these uh, some of these <clears> rapid <throat> fire. And then after, so we'll go through some Super Chats, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, again, IP, uh, whenever you need to leave, uh, we don't want to keep you, mm -hmm. but you, you, IP you're, too. You're, you're welcome to stay on uh, for hour after hour after hour. Um, but we'll read some Super Chats and then we're going to go into what the Muslim sources actually say because... The Muslim cowboy has absolutely no clue what his sources say, apparently. Uh, from Goat Hub. <laughs> from Goat Hub. Uh, I know why they are always late. They are getting 50% off by using code cowboy at Goat Hub. Uh, and by the way, Inspiring philosophy. So you're a good Christian. You don't know what we have to deal with here, but AP's fans follow him over. <laughs> AP's atheist fans follow him over from his channel, and they're all about like, oh, only goats, goat fan, <laughs> goat hub, all this stuff. Uh, let's go to great honorable men in IP and D Wood and uh, AP there too. <laughs> we got the great honorable man. I've got, uh, got AP too. Yep. Uh, Samuel says, Hinduism, we are less than cattle. Islam, Hindus are less than cattle. Wow, so much in common between these great religions. <laughs> <laughs> Christian Fabio, Christian Fabio, that's a picture of me, says, Yeah, partner, time for a great stream. It sure is, isn't it? Uh, let's get Muslim cowboy a burqa for his mare. At least for his goat. I don't know. Uh, he's a yeehawdist. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> he's a yeehawdist. <laughs> Yeehaw, jihad. That's funny. Uh, lack of any evidence from 7th century or untold versions of different Qurans are deeply disconcerting for Islamists. Hope you include Mr. Al Fadi soon. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to be on uh, Al Fadi's channel on maybe Monday or something like that. Uh, we got a super sticker, hippo character. My Talmudic shekels will be for jizya. Good, good, good. Take all the shekels. The Muslim cowboy was my favorite part. Oh, Far Four. <laughs> <laughs> it's from Far Four. It says, the Muslim cowboy was my favorite partner. Yeehaw. <laughs> Let's get him a burqa for his blow up doll. Dang. <laughs> People are ruthless, man. Trying to be nice. Mm -hmm. Trying to be nice as we, as we can, given his horrible, evil, <laughs> sick views. <laughs> here I to have give... no sympathy for them. Yeah, me neither. That's why I keep reading these things. Uh, here to give my Mahdi tribute, I choose the Goat Boy. <laughs> there used to be a Saturday Night Live character called Goat Boy. We should probably pull that up and see if we can use any of those clips for something. Uh, Muslim Cowboys Hadith. It was narrated by the farm hand of Allah, the eyes of the leather chaps, <laughs> leather chaps of the anus. That's a good one. That's nice. Here's a tribute from your Mossad handler. Thank you. We like, uh, we love our Mossad handlers. Just, just uh, send us our, <laughs> so send us a chat like on, this. tell us what we're supposed to do. Uh, I guess this, this is why we're doing everything we're doing. Yeah. And uh, AP already uh, followed orders and crushed Daniel Hikikachu. Alhamdulillah. By the way, Daniel Hikikachu was in on it, of, of, of course. This is why. Yeah, he's, got, he's obvious. He's obviously getting paid, of course. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> To him, the waters are the leather, are the letter, oh, buttless chaps. <laughs> uh, eyes. Okay. Eight mint eyes. Uh, that one gamer missed AP and IP's stream. They must know that if Snoop Dogg came out with a song, if he were Muslim, it would be gin and Jews. 
<laughs> he was he yes. was funny. It was funny because a couple of years ago, he actually just randomly came out with a Christian album. And people asked him, like, hey, you know, it seemed like the most Christian guy in the world. I just wanted to do something positive for, for once. That was cool. Nice. <laughs> the Christian metalhead Nadir should debate Ali Dawa on if there are scientific miracles in the Quran. That's what who who would love to see that? Like some of the older generation of Dawa Gandis who still uh, who who were using the scientific miracles back in the day versus the new guys who admit that it's all a bunch of idiotic nonsense. Uh, Avi says, enjoy some of my Jew shekels. We always yes. Jew shekels are our favorite shekels. AP, did your did you ask your keepers why, if the Talmud's so evil, did the Quran quote it? I um, I wanted to bring that up, um, but I, I don't know. There, there was just so much to say, so much going on, and the guy just shot himself in the foot, and uh, everyone saw it. David used in the saw foot. It. Oh. How much I shot himself in the foot, in the stomach, in the chest, in the head. <laughs> <laughs> I was enjoying it so much uh, that I, I didn't even get to raise that point. And it wasn't even necessary. <laughs> but yeah, that there is that point, and and that is something that we are that we talked about um, in the past, which is that um, the Quran has a certain um, phrase which some people some uh, some of those moderate muslims uh cite quite often which is uh, whoever kills one uh human it is as if he had killed all mankind uh but what the quran does there is actually um it reveals that as if allah had said that to the jews in the past but what it is actually doing is it is quoting the talmud it is quoting yeah. rabbis who said that in the talmud yeah um, so, and what's, what's crazy is like, it's indisputable. It's indisputable when you read the reasoning in the Talmud and you read the reasoning in the Quran, the Quran actually leaves a part out. The Quran leaves a part out so that it doesn't, it doesn't actually make sense. Uh, you, in other words, you need the Talmud for the Quran to make sense because in the Quran, it just says, you know, Cain killed Abel and then Cain didn't know what to do. And then a a bird came and taught him uh, how to how to bury the dead. And then it says, therefore, Allah revealed, if anyone kills a man, it's as if he killed all mankind. It's like, wait a minute, what? what? It's a story. Wait, what? What are you talking? What are you talking about? Right. And so note, it's a, you know, it's it's a therefore it's giving you the explanation, but it does. It doesn't make the connection. You have to go to the Talmud and then it makes the connection. It's the story of Cain and Abel. And then a rabbi pointed out that the word for blood there is actually plural. So it doesn't say your brother's blood cries out from the ground. It says your brother's bloods cry out from the ground. And this rabbi, just giving his interpretation, says um, that's because in killing his brother, he was killing all his future descendants as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's the bloods of all his future descendants um, that he killed and killing that one person, you're killing, you're killing the entire future of the, of that, of that person. And so, and then the rabbi concludes, therefore, if anyone kills a man, it's as if he's killed all mankind. Uh, and the tell, I mean, the, the Quran, uh, picks up on this because Muhammad is hearing some Jews say this, but he doesn't make the connection. It's just story of Cain. And somehow this means if anyone kills a man, it's as if he's killed all mankind. You left out that little bit of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, exegesis. You know what, David? This is actually, I think, I think this is the 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 best explanation of that that you have given so far, of what is actually going on in the Talmud and and how the Quran is quoting it with ignorance and has no idea about it. But it also shows uh, how intricate the Talmud is compared to the Quran, which is just, you know, which just repeats idiotic things over and over again and when you deal with money do this and this and that and also all the disbelievers will go to hell and by the way kill the disbelievers and so on mm -hmm. um whereas a talmud is, is lengthy discussions about words and their implications and the morality that follows from them and disagreements between both sides and yet we have people like Dan and Kikic who come in debates and try to treat the talmud as if it were the quran and say look on this page, in this chapter, it says, it says, uh, it says this. Therefore, all Jews take that as a command and believe in it. Muslims like Daniel Kikichu treat the Talmud as if it were the Quran, as if every single word in it was a uh, a divinely revealed command, unchangeable to all Jews everywhere, and mm -hmm. it just shows how ignorant they are of uh, Scripture, and shows how 
Islam makes them so ignorant because Islam doesn't teach you very much. It just leaves you with one little book that is the Quran, and it's 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 a terrible book. It is pretty uh, pretty terrible, and it, it might be interesting at some point to do something like exhaustive. That matter of fact, that would be a that would be a a decent book that someone should write. Uh, Basically, something along the lines of how the Talmud was used by Muhammad mm -hmm. or Talmudic influence on Muhammad, because, you know, in, in Surah 5, verse 32, it, it, it quotes the Talmud. It quotes the Talmud. And you can't even understand what's being said without understanding the Talmud, because Muhammad then leaves a step out. But also just lots of the things when Muhammad is being challenged, he's giving answers from the Talmud and Muslims don't know. Like uh, even on the like the scientific stuff, <laughs> when Muhammad is saying that it remains, uh, you know, starts off as a drop of fluid and remains that way for 40 days, it gives a timeline. Now, keep in mind, that's that's false. It does not. You do not remain the sperm drop, the, the mixture of fluids for 40 days. That's false. Um, but what's interesting is says the exact same thing in the Talmud remains as this as this mingled drop of fluid for 40 days. So where's Muhammad getting that idea from? From the Jews. Getting it from the getting it from the Jews and Muslims. What do they do? they mock the Talmud all day long? His it, meanwhile, his prophet's like, "Hey guys, go find out what the Talmud says. Go find out what the <laughs> Jews are saying. Go find out what Rabbi such and such said, so I can pretend I actually know what I'm talking about." He's treating these guys as like the all knowing people. Whatever they say in any of their whatever any of their rabbis said is as good as gold. Meanwhile, Muslims today treat all these treat all the rabbis as like horrible, evil people. Wow. I, I'm I find it funny how you made how, how you made Muhammad there uh, look much more in, much smarter and much more informed than he actually was. He probably had no idea what was going on. He was just hearing Jews say things, and he was like, "Oh, the Jews say this, so therefore, okay, yeah, Allah revealed this and this and that to them. I'm going to include that in my preachings tomorrow." <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, Andrea says, "What? Hey, what do you guys think about racists who start YouTube channels just to spread lies about Islam?" I, I mean, love like, them. <laughs> talking about the Dawa guys, obviously, racists who start YouTube channels. So, and then they lie about Islam. I don't know Islam. what she's referring to. Well, well, there are a bunch of Dawa guys who are racist, and they start YouTube channels to and lie about Islam. So, yeah, we don't like that. Well, That's I bad love stuff. Them. I love them. Addison said, are IP and David going to read Gary Habermas's new book if they haven't already? I'm assuming uh, you're talking about this uh, massive. He's been t he's been telling he's been telling me about that book for like 15 years or something like that. He's like, hey, and I got this. I'm going to work on this massive uh, um, something companion to the resurrection. It's, or it's something also like that. it's also volume one. Mind yeah. You. So he's got a. He's got another one. It's a giant yeah. book and it's volume one. But yeah, he's been working on that for years. So he's always talked about it's expanded over the years. So, you know, way back in the day, you talk about the 1400 sources he went through, uh, basically mm -hmm. everything published in uh, I, in English, German and French or something like that down to, you know, on the on the resurrection. He's basically read everything that was written. And then over the years, it expands. So he's like, OK, now I've read 1800 sources on a, on this stuff. And so he's yeah. he's it, compi he's compiling all his life's work into a book. Yeah, I plan to read it. I plan to read his whole thing eventually. I got a, I got a stack of books I need to read on uh, gospels right now. So that's what I'm focusing on. So I probably won't get to it for not least till the summer, I'd say. So it depends. And it will take you five minutes to read that giant thing because that's what kind of <laughs> you are. Um, and of course, AP will never read it because who doesn't believe it? Yeah. Why would I read it? Why would I read anything? Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever thought of discussing with a Catholic like Pints with Aquinas or Trent Horn? I think he would. I think it would be interesting to hear your points of views. Um, I've been on Pints yeah. with Aquinas. We talked about Islam. Yeah. Um, me too. He flew me in. I was on his, uh, he flew me in to be there in person. Uh, I mean, I'm perfectly, I'm, I'm just not terribly interested in like uh, Protestantism versus Catholicism versus, you know, Orthodox and so on. Not terribly interested in that. And it's weird because I'm not, I'm not terribly aggressive towards any of those positions. So I'm not sure it's, it's really interesting. It's more interesting when you have a, you know, like a, uh, a, a, a person who's really committed to one position and says the other positions are wrong. And you get the person on the other side who says, no, your position's wrong. And you actually have a, a debate or, or, or discussion. Whereas me, I'd be like, eh, I don't know. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. You got a good point there. 
no, I don't, I don't really agree with you. You got an okay point. So I'd, I'd be kind of like that. So, um, but yeah, totally. I mean, matter of fact, either one of those guys ever wants to come on here and, and discuss something, they can. No problem. Uh, Marcos, if if the trajectory continues, as it were, Jesus is king. True. <laughs> but even if the trajectory doesn't continue, he's still king. Yeah. Why uh, is there a condition? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, atheist AP. <laughs> peace be upon me. Peace be upon me says still picturing David peeing over the cub. Uh, wouldn't uh, wouldn't be historical. AP still waiting on your stream about your boy Hitler. The fourth the boy will be Jerusalemic. Oh, yeah. I need to do that. I need to do that. I should do that. Singing Islam, Islam, Uber Alice. That's what we say. Uber Alice. Yeah, that's kind of good. That's a jam. Yeah. Uh, Southerners would make the worst jihadists. They wouldn't be able to get to the battlefield because their Ford F 150s keep breaking down. Ford F 150 is a very reliable truck. It does not break down. Let's not spread uh, attacks on good American products. Yeah, stop propaganda. Bad Empanada <laughs> made a 10 minute video about why it's fine that America is a colony, but Israel being a colony isn't fine that guy I, I i didn't know who that is until very recently uh that's some some idiot some jerk i've, se I've is... seen him popping up too uh, but yeah i'm not familiar really yeah with he, he recently started he recently kept talking about he keeps talking about israel and hamas and uh his he's basically very much a um anti anti-jewish almost as, as it looks like at the moment anti-israel pro anything palestine propagandist and um the guy is just it's just a complete jerk i mean <laughs> he's not even he's not even that um that ignorant but then he also is because he he talks about the history as if he somehow understands it. And he said he says something incredibly stupid. I'm trying to think of it. Everyone was laughing about it the other day. I can't uh, seem to remember it right now. But it's, it's it is, one of those guys who have been, who have suddenly popped up because of the whole Israel thing. Yeah, and that's a that's a situation. It's it's there are situations where the situation arises, and like as long as you're saying that incredibly stupid stuff for your group they're they're going to rally around you and start uh and that encourages people oh everyone liked it when i said that stupid thing let me say that more same thing we were talking about with uh the muslim cowboy and, oh i start defending child marriage and everyone loves me mm. <laughs> muslim cowboy muslim cowboy bom, 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 bom. uh the cowboy is also a goat guy, if you know what I'm talking about. Very rude uh, Swiss apologetics. Although, as we pointed out, the exact same reasoning that would allow the Muslim cowboy to say that a prepubescent girl is just a grown woman just by saying it would allow him to say that a goat is a woman. Exact same reasoning. If, 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 if biology is becoming irrelevant to them, they can say whatever they want and they should stop condemning people who say what they whatever they want uh landon okay. says boy toy don't they have baka bas yes they do that's what's creepy about it yeah. now, i i could have brought up more so i brought up the passage about muhammad uh uh pulling up his shirt so a guy could smooch him all over his uh milky white flesh could have brought up the stuff about muhammad sucking on little boys tongues and lips and so on and then guaranteeing paradise to anyone whose tongue or lips that he's sucked on uh but we so don't want to be Somebody's asked the Muslim cowboy how, if he would do anything Muhammad would do. How far is he going to go with some of these examples? Oh, yeah, that that is an issue because we've only been talking about the child marriage. So, so notice again, the Muslim cowboy, he said, I mean, he said, I, I will put it back on the screen just for just so no in case anyone came in late. Oh, yeah. But he said the disbelievers think we should be ashamed of some things in Islam. There is not a single thing our prophet did that I myself wouldn't do. This is submission. This is the way. So notice that would include sucking on the tongues of little boys. That would include, as I've already pointed out, uh, beheading uh, hundreds of Jews. Now, Muslim Cowboys probably do <laughs> darn right I would. Uh, but uh, you're talking about uh, buying, selling, and trading black African slaves. Muhammad did that. You're talking about banging your slave girls. Muhammad did that. 
even got in a little trouble over that. Uh, once he got caught with, uh, he got caught in the bed of his wife Hafsa with his slave girl Mary the Copt. His wives got so upset, not because he was having sex with a slave girl. They knew he was allowed to do that. But then he was doing it in the in the bed of one of his wives. They considered that really disrespectful. They complained until he swore an oath to his wives. I will never have sex with that girl again. Then a little later, he gets a revelation. Yeah, go ahead and uh, start banging your slave girl again. Uh, we know he did because he got her pregnant. So note it, So that that's multiple things. Um, our good friend, the Muslim cowboy, could get a sex slave, have sex with his sex slave, do it in his wife's bed uh, or wives' beds. Then if his wives get upset at him, he could swear and, oh, swear by Allah, I swear by the great God, Allah I will never do that again, and then come back and, and just do it, because Muhammad did. So lots of stuff he could, he could if, if he, uh, well, he can't really have an adopted son. That's, see, that's the thing. There are things you can do that you, you actually aren't supposed to do in Islam, but you could do them. So he could adopt a son, even though it's not, even though it's against Islam, but he wants to do whatever Muhammad did. So he could adopt a son. Then that son could get married and then he could get the hots for his, his adopted son's wife, convince his adopted son to divorce the girl and then marry her. It'd be to it would totally be what Muhammad did. Hey, he could also do an Islamic combo move. Uh, uh, IP, remind me. Combo um, Islamic combo move sounds funny <laughs> to me. <laughs> remind me, when you asked him about, um, about taking sex slaves and uh, taking sex slaves that are, that are like at the age of seven or six or something like that. What did he Daniel say? Daniel Kikichu, right? Yeah, Daniel, Daniel Kikichu, yeah, sorry. Yeah, he was, he could totally do that. If you attack a village, if Muslims attack a village, uh, they can in there. They have found a seven-year-old. That's the age I use, but I'm sure he would go younger. It, if you found a seven-year-old who had started some puberty, like minimal pubic hair, breast budding, you could take her back as a sex slave. And, mm -hmm. and Daniel said, "Yeah, that'd be better than leaving her there to die." Or Daniel, you just you know bring them back and treat them like humans, not as property. I don't know. That would be, it's crazy to think is that as a possibility, but yeah, that's what he was. He's all for that. So in Dawa, yes, you can attack a village, kill all the men. And then you take all the women back to be sex slaves, including as young as seven year old girls. It's according to Daniel Kiki Chu. The, uh... Hey, uh, uh, the Muslim cowboy, he has a, uh, he has a channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought of his theme song for his channel. <laughs> hey, Muslim Cowboy, we know you're watching because you're already sharing that you're going to be on. Although pretty disrespectful not to share the link. Uh, should have shared the link to uh, to this live stream. And if you don't, I mean, you know, how confident are you of your uh, positions? But anyway, I got your uh, got a got a pretty dope uh, uh, theme song. It goes like this. I need. Uh, I need some guitar. I need someone. To, we'll have to do it more professionally, but ready? And and this should just be kind of the opening lines. We can make we can expand it to a full song. But uh, uh, Muslim Cowboy, you're 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 welcome welcome to use this. Um, so goes like this. Ready? Here we go. Well, I'm the Muslim Cowboy playing my guitar. Girl, I hear you're nine years old, so climb on in my car. If you try to run away, you won't get very far, cause I will beat you senseless while I scream Allah Akbar. Ho hi la 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 lee 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 lee. Right? David, why? What? Why? <laughs> why would you do this? Trying to help that guy yeah. out. Now he's gonna do it. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's worth it. It's worth it. I, I try to help out YouTubers, man, even if I disagree with them on things. <laughs> Man. <laughs> <laughs> I should I should make a I should make a full a full song like that. It'd be awesome. No, you should. That's pretty powerful though. All right. Well you guys get to the Muslim sources. I'm gonna check out. I was here for the studies and to show how incredibly anti scientific the Muslim cowboy is and how you know it's all just about harming girls, not about actually. That's serious homophobic. Yeah, like I said, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, we yeah, we know. Uh you served your purpose. You gave us the studies. I'm, oh yeah, that's what I'm good at. So, all right. I'll see you guys next time. All right, man. Okay. See ya. IP. Yep. yep. Um, yeah. yeah. Me and me and IP were originally we originally scheduled it for last Thursday. He wanted to respond to more videos by that creepy dude who says that uh, 
he's into the occult and demons told him that Islam is the truth. And this guy, so converted to Islam based on demons telling him that Islam is the truth. So we want to respond to some more of his videos. But uh, when we got close to Thursday, that was right after your debate with Daniel. So he's like, oh, no, we should we should go. We should do APs live and then talk about uh, talk about the uh, that stuff. And then so we rescheduled for today the live stream we we're supposed to have on Thursday. We rescheduled it for today. And so last night, we were still planning on going through that. And then uh, the Muslim cowboy started running his mouth to defending a uh, child marriage. And so we said, uh, hey, maybe we should do, a, maybe we'll do a trial marriage instead. Since That's always it's, fun. Yeah. And, and I it's always just, like talking about child marriage in the context of Islam. As long as we can talk about this, I love doing it because it just gives Islam a wonderful reputation. Yeah. yeah, and it's crazy because they keep bringing it up. I mean, we, to be clear, we bring it up, but they keep defending it. They keep defending it. Uh, and when they defend it, and it's just these new people who don't know anything, they have no idea. They give the, they re, they give the same regurgitated things they heard uh, and then expect us all not to respond to them. But notice they're they're making a pretty powerful point for us. Something happens with these converts that instantly convinces them that, hey, my job in life was to defend child marriage. That's the most it's important thing I can be doing. they paid by Israel, by the Mossad, and by CIA to make Islam look bad. That's why they're doing this, of course. Uh, Michael here says, it can't be overstated how much gamers are over-sensationalized. It's not a case of taboo. We have to listen to brands, and we are brand number three. Do you know what that means? What? Talk about the gamers. What's going on with the gamers? What is this about? I don't know I mean, if that was a reference to something we were talking about earlier or something. I don't know. Uh, from Ligama, uh, Cat One, Cowboy is culturally insensitive. True. It should be Goat Boy. <laughs> What's wrong? With you? <laughs> or Camel Boy. I don't know. Ali G was also a Dawa moron since he said, if there's grass on the pitch, let's play. That's true. He also said, if there's fluff on the muff, then she is old enough. Now, to be fair to to even uh, to even Ali G, he was talking about voting, right? But he, he made it sound <laughs> creepy, right? He was he was proposing. He's talking to some uh, political analysts, and he says, "What does you think about making the age of voting puberty?" And uh, and then he started coming up with all these sayings and so on to defend that. If there's if there's grass on the pitch, let's play. <laughs> um, he was trying to get one of the other guys to agree with it. And the, one of the guys goes, okay, well, how do you know if you, if you make it at puberty, then how are you going to know if a girl's reached puberty? I mean, how are you going to know if someone's reached puberty? And LDG goes, well, I'll check the girls, right? No. <laughs> 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 What's funny is the Muslim cowboy's like, oh, oh, oh that would be my dream job. <laughs> uh, uh, that's going to be my job. <laughs> <laughs> With the uh, talking of him calling AP a boy toy and Prophet Mo being kissed all over his milky white flesh, all I can think about uh, about with him being called the Muslim cowboy is a Muslim version of the Ram Ranch song. I don't know what that is, and I'm not sure I want to know. Ram Ranch sounds pretty creepy. Ram Ranch. I don't know what that is. Don't know either, and uh, I'm never going to look it up either. Velvet Jazz, looking up something like that might be similar to looking up, you know, things that Muhammad Hijab posts and no one knows what it is until they look it up and they're like, oh, I can't, I got to wash my eyeballs out and look it up right now. Velvet Jazz, David and AP did debate Nadir and Perfect Dawa last year. Great debate. It was an epic smash of lying Dawa. Dawa guys definitely lied. Jonathan says, what is this? Broke back profit? <laughs> More like broke butt profit. <laughs> Bro, bank jihad. Uh, Sheikh Yogi Bear. Alhamdulillah, the I choose the cow meme proves Islam. It refers to those who follow the prophet Muhammad. This, uh, this, uh, what is this? Obviously. Oh, this obvious prophecy. Yet you got schooled. Oh yeah. The I choose the cow mean proves Islam. It refers to those who follow Prophet Muhammad. Get it? I'm checking Ram Ranch song right now. Don't it's, do it. This don't, uh, don't look it up. Don't I will not up. look it up. I got a sixth sense about this stuff, man. <laughs> 
Uh, how can Christians be confident their values are true? Apologetics only makes them plausible. What are you talking about? How can Christians be confident their values are true? Apologetics only makes them plausible. Well, 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 I don't know. Is this a challenge to us saying uh, you shouldn't be banging little girls? I don't know what we brought out that would, uh, anyway. Uh, yeah. This is why Islam is so dangerous and against the values of the developed world. It promotes the pressure. Hey, you, know you know what I find funny? Uh, why, why would he call you in that tweet? Uh, he, he, he referred to you as the greatest Exian. Exian. Yeah. Greatest Exian. Uh, the greatest. Kaf, kafir. Mm -hmm. or he, it, it's one thing to say the greatest, uh, you know, uh, Islamophobe, the greatest. Mm -hmm. Christian Islam, but the greatest Christian. Yeah, I'm Catholic, the greatest Christian that, unbeliever. Yeah. That doesn't that doesn't make sense. Like, yeah, <laughs> what is he talking about? This well, it's just, it's funny it's because fun. as much as I run my mouth, I view myself as pretty insignificant and expendable. <laughs> In other words, I'm I'm thinking like the entire history of humanity, and like I'm this little I'm like this little dot somewhere, and and so you know how how, how significant am I am I really? But then I see these guys. Ah, he's the greatest Christian kafir of all time. I'm like, whoa, these guys have a pretty high view of me. For for Reed once called me the greatest uh, the the greatest Islamophobe in the world or something like that. Yeah, it's like, wait, what? You guys. But this, this guy comes here and elevates you above all of that. I mean, Mohammed Hijab uh, said call, referred to me uh, and you as uh, the great the greatest. Um, or great anti-Muslim, anti-Islam uh, critics or polemics of nice. our time or something like that, which was actually a very nicely put. It was very interesting, Pretty very dope. flattering. But then this guy comes in and he and he makes the greatest praise that anyone has ever uttered for David. And he says he's the greatest Christian kafir, not even, uh, you know, Islamophobe, not even critic of Islam, directly just greatest Christian kafir. That's really really strange the guy probably yeah, has is. some problems i don't know <laughs> yeah these guys are really encouraging me it's like wow i am making a difference and they're feeling it they're feeling it they're the feeling it they're Christian feeling the heat they are feeling the heat anyway this uh comment uh this is why islam is so dangerous and against the values of the developed world it promotes depravity like child marriages and yeah that's uh again people will say oh shame on you guys for responding it's like wait guy i don't, I don't know if you've seen it but there are a ton of people trying to convince the world that banging little kids is perfectly fine and we respond to them and you go oh you evil islamophobes and then what what do what do guys do they go and they start banging little girls and then they're like, oh they're shocked look at these grooming gangs like what did you think the people who think that it's okay to have sex with little girls and to take uh, uh you know non-muslim girls as their captives what do you think they were going to do we told you, you whined about, you didn't whine about them or what their book says. You whined about us. And then, oh, shock, look, oh, how's this happening? My goodness, man. Terrible, terrible. Stuff. From Sarah. Knock, knock. Who's there? Howdy. Howdy who? Howdy, partner. I'm Chris Hansen from Dateline NBC. Why don't you take a seat? <laughs> nice. But I've still been planning for years the uh, To Catch a Prophet or uh, Chris Hansen nabs vocab as Prophet Muhammad. Uh, Joshua here says, pedo apologists and normality polemics. What is each of your prescriptive suggestions to a current description of reality? P.S. Nadir number one is running. What pedo apologists and, nor and normality polemics? What is each of your prescriptive suggestions to a current description of reality? <clears throat> So you've got a you've got a description of reality. What is your prescription? I the only know. prescription is more cowbell. Is more what? Cowbell. Remember the skit? I even sent it to you. I got a fever, and the only prescription is more cowbell. Oh, okay. I remember something like that. I don't remember Christopher Walken. I told you is the greatest SNL skit of all time. More cowbell. Famous skit. I don't know. I, I might have watched it and thought. Uh, <laughs> then, is, see, this is yeah. why no one likes you. This is why no one likes you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely pathetic. Uh, Joshua, Joshua, that would be a, yeah, that would be a discussion for a, a live stream that's geared towards that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. As for, I mean, as for right now, if you're talking about like what the world, you know, what the world's actually like, the big part of it is exposing it to get people to know about it right now. So prescription, I mean, basic prescription is expose everything that's going on. And then, then you'd, you, then you'd figure out where to go from there. Cause as of right now, it's, uh, you've still got people denying the, what it's denying that Islam teaches these things and you've got all the guys. So, I mean, st step one is, is getting accurate information out there. An yeah. informed population is kind of the first step. Nanny Nanny Poo Poo says, did you know baby girls? Oh, Ali Dao impression. Did you know baby girls already have their eggs when they're in the mother's womb? Therefore, at birth, they's ready for marriage, yeah? <laughs> Isn't it? Sounds like something one of those guys would say. And I'm not even joking. It's like when you compare it with everything else they say, it's not it's not terribly different. I know, right? It's, it's, it doesn't sound that, uh, you know, strange when you coming out of their mouths. Uh it would it would totally, they would say worse things than that probably yeah uh, islam is a religion of satan no it's good uh, shiba says we may need another special lesson complete with illustrations for the mentally deficient Stop here i'm talking crap about satan why, is, why do we have to blame that guy for yeah why does ap ever always defend the worst possible <laughs> beings <laughs> Uh, Johanna IP, can you please, can you make sense of Yahweh to Jesus, please? No, he can't because he's gone. He's weakling. You see, he saw that probably in rain. Giovanni yeah. says, bet this guy listens to when the sun goes down on my side of town, those lonesome children. Not familiar with that song. You know that song? No, I thought you, were, you should be familiar with it. Okay. No, I'm, I'm familiar with a lot of songs, but not familiar with that one. There's that there's that old there's that old song in that musical Thank Heaven for Little Girls. <laughs> I've inserted I've I've inserted that into some Muhammad videos back in the day. You did? Yeah. You did? Uh <laughs> ch child sex ring in Mennonite communities? Well, if yeah, that would that would be creepy. Not familiar with that one. Uh but yeah, we would condemn a child sex ring in any community. What were you going to say? No, they'll say, oh, it's good huh? because it's in a Mennonite community. What are you even talking about? My I've never heard of such, I've never heard of such a thing. That, no, I've, never a... heard, I've never heard of that either. But uh, guess what? If Mennonites start running around and say, it's good to bang little girls, we will correct them too. But right now we kind of have one group whose most prominent uh, spokesmen are all defending child marriage right now. This reminds me of people saying, what about the KKK? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or or what about the Westboro Baptist what about, Church? What about them? <laughs> which has like which has like fifty You've members. You've been refuted. <laughs> you know what I find so ridiculous? Um, Westboro Baptist Church. So it's it's a it's a it's it's one church that has like uh, a handful of members, maybe uh, one hundred or so max, and um, it is it's like the only thing that people can go for when they want to, uh, you know. Uh, yeah christians that's good. Or christians it's always that like same thing right it's like you even see it in movies like it, it's it's a tiny little insignificant group and even in movies they feature that even in movies they put some signs there and obviously try to represent them as as a representation of these uh yeah. terrible terrible intolerant christians mm -hmm. that made that try, try to make the world worse for everyone but that's really what these people have yeah <laughs> You're right. That you're right. That is interesting because if I, if I wanted to complain about jihadis, I could just like find you uh, a dozen stories about yeah. things that happen today, or I could find you a complete a different dozen stories about things that happened yesterday, or I could find you a, a dozen different attacks the day before that. It's endless and relentless. And still, when we say, "Hey, look at this jihad! Look at these forty to fifty thousand terrorist attacks committed in the name of Allah just since nine eleven," the response is, "Oh, but what about West?" Westboro Baptist Church, they protest soldiers' funerals. Hmm, see, everyone's got their radicals. And what about <laughs> Anders Breivik? Hmm, there was Anders Breivik. Hmm, see? And it's like, yes, we. there can be other people with some very dangerous views. It seems to be springing a lot from one source nowadays. Why don't you condemn the KKK? Oh, hypocrite. <laughs> so Joshua says, uh, IP. So here's IP. IP2. Uh, uh, Daniel, do you know what precocious puberty is? Daniel, 
Uh, I have a PhD in precocious puberty, says my credentials and my search history. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he certainly is. He certainly is the master on that. Uh, Mike says, uh, we'll read a couple more super chats and then we're going to go to the sources, ladies and gentlemen. Got to have the sources because, uh, again, we the, the point the, the point of the, the first part uh, when we had uh, IP breaking down some studies and so on is our good friend, our new friend, the Muslim cowboy has no clue what he's talking about uh, biologically. But part two is that he has no clue what he's talking about from an from an Islamic perspective. He just doesn't know. He hasn't done the uh, research. Again, I'm, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt and assuming that he's not deliberately lying because it's much more common to just be ignorant and to regurgitate the uh, stuff you heard from some other Dawa guy instead of doing the difficult work of, you know, reading. <laughs> yeah. So we'll read a couple more Super Chats and then we'll uh, look at what the sources say about Aisha and how our, our and how the Muslim cowboy actually just just completely destroyed Muhammad. And when we read what Muhammad actually s said and did. And since the Muslim cowboy said he would do anything Muhammad did, he's going to be doing some way creepier things than he uh, he thought. Uh, Mike says, I'm new to this channel, but it is crazy that you have to make arguments, citing scientific studies, to prove to someone that you shouldn't bang nine-year-olds. Thank you. <laughs> That's what, like, <laughs> AP, if, if you go back, you know, 15, 20 years, and you're thinking, what are you going to be doing 15, 20 years from now? You're like, I'm going to be trying to explain to people I'm going to be trying, I'm going to spend my life trying to explain to grown men that they shouldn't be having sex with five-year-olds. That's going to, that's going to take up a significant portion of our time. You're like what? There's no way that's going to be a thing. There's no way. And yet here we are week after week trying to explain that puberty is a process. It's not a one-time thing. It's not, uh, it's not child, 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 up fully grown woman. It's not, it's not how it works. Wait, why it's not? Huh. That's wow, wow, weird. wow, wow, wow. So yes, oh, you, you're right. I could have never imagined that I would be doing that because uh, I would have probably said, "Well, if the prophet did it, then you know, yeah, it's fine. It's good. Uh, I will do it too. I will do anything." <laughs> IP, you need to be careful. Your voice with all those cracks is going to tempt the Dawa guys. Uh. It's pretty IP. rude to insult. I'm just glad that IP is gone so they didn't have to read that despicable insult from a yeah. heartless, a heartless evil person making fun of his voice. Isn't that terrible? Yeah. But with that said, yes, they would have been attracted when they heard his voice. Uh, Bikers yeah. with Bible says, hi, IP. Why? Are, see, should have skimmed and found all the ones for IP before he left. Hi, IP. God bless you. Can you please give me the links to these studies so I can print them out? to take them to speaker's corner on a big board. Oh, that's a, that is a good idea. Um, I will relay that message to, well, well how am I going to get it to you though? Cause he's not there. All right. You're just going to have to go to, uh, go to his page and, and ask him for that stuff, but he'd be happy to, he'd be happy to send them to you. If you're going to use them. So absolutely. Um, Ian, oh, no comment. Thanks for the super chat, though. Is there a study about girls picking berries? What was that from? The picking berries? Oh, that was from Rosie's Corner. Imagine a society where all you need to do in order to be considered a grown up is learn to pick berries. Well, then, by the t if you teach a little tiny girl to pick berries and she's ready for you to bang her, that was her reasoning. Yeah, that yeah. yeah, was. Uh, Joshua says, Christianity and Islam, uh, Christian pattern of conduct, not uh, possible to meet standards of Jesus. Islam, almost every follower is better than the monster. Yeah, that's uh, I've seen that pointed out before many times. It's Christians all fall short of living up to the example of Jesus. But uh, almost every Muslim you meet is a better example than Muhammad. But, but how can you say that? Most Muslims don't have child brides. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> After reading the thumbnail, I was hoping he'd say inviting men to his room every night, then tell everyone it was Gabriel. Yeah, that was. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad did that. So Muhammad had his buddy Dia al Kalbi over. <laughs> Who knows what they were doing? We don't have the details. I mean, we do have, you know, you could put things together. You could say, why were Muhammad's uh, clothes always covered in semen? And wait, he's got this guy, Dia al Kalbi, who's the hottest dude in town. 
This is I can't even think who's like the young stud of our time. It's like a it was like a young Brad Pitt back in the day. Um, like a young IP. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's D Hill Colby. And then uh, his wife would notice, hey, you're hanging out with uh, D Hill. What's he doing over here at the house? And Mohammed would say, no, oh, that's the angel Gabriel. And what are all those stains? What are all clothes? the semen stains? I don't know. Just scratch them off. I have to go to the mosque. <laughs> <laughs> What is it? So, so, so the Muslim cowboy would have to do that since Muhammad did. <laughs> he said he'd do anything Muhammad did. Uh, Jesse here says, this is as bad as those nuts poisoning kids with propaganda causing gender dysphoria and prescribing gender blockers. Islam is what Islam does. Uh, Islam is what Islam does. Uh, stay away from Islam. Yeah, it's uh, you have Muslims complaining about stuff that's going on with kids and yet look at what they want to do with kids. Yeah. Kevin says, uh, oh, that's a, that's a description of a super sticker. Why does it show a super sticker? want to take care of them. What's your problem? They want to take care of the kids. Pear character riding a firework rocket disappearing away before bursting in the sky. It sounds cool though. <laughs> farmhouse theologian. Hey, don't call yourself farmhouse around the Muslim cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now the Quran is exposed to guys. You know, I'm not just joking here. We pointed out the exact same reasoning he's saying that you could take a prepubescent girl and just call her a woman, and that somehow makes her a woman. How do you respond to that? If, if you wanted to call this a woman, how do you say no? Biology has gone out the window, according to him. Now the Quran is exposed to Western Muslims. Instead of being repulsed, they are embracing child marriage. Where will polemics go from now? Is there a way forward other than patch streams to prevent actual harm to real kids? That is a very, very serious issue. That if you look at the trajectory, right? If you look at the trajectory you go back 15 years ago, 15 years, they were saying all kinds of things. Uh, hey, there's no, there's no, there's no death penalty for apostasy in Islam. There's no, there's no child marriage in Islam. These are all lies, lies of the kuffar. Now they're all bragging about these things from the rooftops. If that's the trajectory, if that's the direction things are going, it seems like it's going to get way worse, right? It seems like they're going to become more gung-ho about marrying little kids and killing apostates and everything. So it's like, ugh, this is not good. Uh, if the trajectory continues as it is, we are in big trouble. And maybe, maybe some people should think once again about, uh, you know, regulating and controlling the presence of Islam in their societies, if they want better societies. Uh, and this huge super chat, five silver pesos. That's way more than five silver pesos. I don't know what the rate of pesos is, but it's uh, definitely not a hundred dollar per peso. Muslim cowboy is all hat, no morality. Yeah. All hat, no brains. <laughs> and this would be a, this would actually be a good, a good time to, uh, check out what the sources actually say. Should we check out what the sources actually say on this? Now, what do the sources actually say? Um, all right, AP, I'm going to zoom down. Let's see, I've got them on here somewhere from different live stream. I've got the sources on Aisha. They're somewhere down here. Where are they? Did I put them in a folder? Oh, here we go. All right, I'm going to zoom through these, AP. I'm just going to pull up a Hadith, read it real quick, and you can come. Who's IP? Just going to, oh, AP. I, P, A, P. It's all the same, a vowel and P. Um, so check this out, ladies and gentlemen. Chapter. So this is Sahih al-Bukhari. Look at the chapter heading. Giving one's young children in, in marriage is permissible. What did the Muslim cowboy say? We're not talking about children. No, we're not talking about children. We're talking about women. This is talking about women. Okay. Bukhari says children, but, uh, the Muslim, it's, it's a, it's also a common thing among, uh, among converts that they like, <laughs> they think they're the most knowledgeable people about Islam and they will, it doesn't matter what the greatest scholars and commentators of all time say. They just, no, I know more. I just converted two weeks ago. Uh -huh, David doesn't know Bukhari is an Islamophobe. So let's go ahead and read this Hadith. The Hadith is there 5133, but you have the chapter heading and then you have a bit of a, a bit of a commentary, but, uh, 
The chapter heading, Giving One's Young Children in Marriage, is permissible. Why? By virtue of the statement of Allah, and for those who have no monthly courses, i.e. they are still immature, Surah 65, verse 4. Everyone remember what Muhammad Hijab quoted? He quoted Surah 65, verse 4, to show that according to the Quran, you can have sex with a five-year-old. And look what this says. And the idda for the girl. No, we're not talking about girls. I'm the Muslim cowboy. I say we're, we're talking about grown women, not girls. Okay. Why don't you read your own sources and stop lecturing us? I mean, in other words, if you want to correct someone, go correct Allah. Build a time machine, Muslim cowboy. Go back in time. Correct Allah. Correct Muhammad. Correct Bukhari. Correct Ibn, Ibn Abbas. Correct Ibn Kathir. Correct all these guys. Don't correct us. These are the guys talk, saying we're, we're talking about children. Again, look at the heading. One's young children. You're the one saying puberty is required. Wrong. Why? By virtue of the statement of Allah and those who have no monthly courses. They're prepubescent. They don't have a monthly period. I.e. they're still immature. How clear could they make it? And as if this isn't enough. And the idda for the girl before puberty. They're talking about the idda is the waiting period after you divorce a girl. So you marry a girl, you have sex with her to consummate the marriage, and you divorce her. Then there's a waiting period before she can marry again. This is talking about the idda, the waiting period after a man divorces a girl. The, the idda for the girl before puberty. Is puberty a requirement? No. What did Muhammad Hijab say? He said you can't get around the fact that puberty is not a requirement. What does the Muslim cowboy said? Oh, I know better than Allah. I know better than Muhammad. I know better than Bukhari. I know better than Ibn Abbas. I know better than Ibn Kathir. I know better than Muhammad Hijab. I know better than 14 centuries of Muslim scholars. Everything I say makes sense in my own head, and therefore that's what Islam is. Welcome to reality, my friend. And then and was, get... you, could, you, could, you, know, you could add a beat to that. And it, could, oh, it, yeah. would, it, sound, it would sound like one of those uh, old like shaggy songs or something like that. They call me Mr. Boombastic, baby fantastic. <laughs> wasn't I'm me. Better than Allah, better than Muhammad, better it wasn't than me. Allah. It wasn't me. <laughs> Picture this: we were both butt naked, <laughs> banging in the barnyard floor. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, <laughs> notice. And then Bukhari gives as an example. Notice, uh, notice why he's bringing this up about marrying young children and girls being prepubescent. Fifty-one thirty-three. That's the hadith. Narrated Aisha that the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old, and then she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. Is this good stuff or bad stuff, AP? Oh, bad, bad, bad. All right, Very we'll zoom bad. through these. 5130, 5134. Narrated Aisha that the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with her when she was six years old, and he consummated the marriage when she was nine years old. How old That's was she? Nine that. years old. How old was she? Nine years old. Bukhari narrated her. She was nine years old. She was nine years old. Narrated Irwa, the Prophet wrote the marriage contract with Aisha when she was six years old and consummated his marriage with her while she was nine years old and she remained with him for nine years, i.e. till his death. There's a reason we're reading uh, uh, multiple hadiths. We're going to see things like this. Because Six everybody years. must know that she was nine years old. And we are all going to know because for years it was us saying it. Now they're saying it too. So the people who are still, the people, they're saying she was nine years old. Oh, okay. okay. Was that a good move for me to do that? It was the perfect move. It was the perfect <laughs> move. Go check this one out, guys. <laughs> Sahil Bukhari, 6130, narrated Aisha. I used to play with the dolls in the presence of the prophet. What's she doing? Play with dolls. Dolls are forbidden in Islam. Dolls are images. You can't have a doll in Islam. What's going on here? I used to play with the dolls in the presence of the prophet, and my girlfriends also used to play with me. A bunch of little girls playing with dolls together. When Allah's messenger used to enter my dwelling place, they used to hide themselves. Yeah, good, smart, gir smart girls. You definitely want to hide yourself from this creepazoid who's banging your little friend. Can you imagine that? Like you're a little girl, you're playing with dolls, and you got to run from this dude because he's banging your little friend. They used to hide themselves. <laughs> 
What do little girls do around Muhammad? They hide themselves. All right, let, let's hide. Let's Smart. hide. The prophet is coming. He wants to take uh, our dear friend Aisha to bed. And uh, it's just a general rule. If Daniel Hakikachu is around, hide yourself, little girls. Uh, if the Muslim cowboy's me. around, uh, even if Rosie's around, because, I mean, she thinks that it's okay to marry you off to some dude who's going to bang you. Uh, anyway, they used to hide themselves, but the prophet would call them to join and play with me. So these girls run. They scatter like ants. and ah, We get away from this creepazoid. And he's like, no, bring them back in here so I can watch them play. Oh, oh yes. Where did your friends go? Yes. <laughs> Let's play, little girls. <laughs> now, notice we have the commentary here. We have commentary because any Muslim would be wondering, hey, wait a minute. They're not allowed to play with dolls. You've got all these girls playing with dolls. What's going on here? And Aisha, a wife of Muhammad, is playing with dolls. They're not supposed to be playing with dolls. What's going on here? Then you have a little commentary from Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani who says, the playing with the dolls and similar images is forbidden. It is forbidden. It's haram. Why is, why is Muhammad's wife doing it? And why is Muhammad letting girls do it in front of him? But it was allowed for Aisha at that time as she was a little girl, not yet reached the age of puberty. Oh, what did our good friend, the Muslim cowboy, say? Oh, I shall reach puberty. That's why Muhammad jumped on her and was ready to start banging her. Not what we, not what Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani says. Not what we read in Bukhari. Not what we read in the Hadith. We have to wonder, why would you say that? It's not what, it's not what Islam teaches. It's a, it's a, it, this kind of became a common thing, um, there, there are sort of like phases to Dawah. So the first phase was, no, it never happened. You're all lying. Don't believe the Kufar when they say that Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old girl. And then the sort of second phase was, oh, yes, Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old girl, but it was because she reached puberty. And they would say that. They would say that based on the idea that Muhammad married her when she was six or seven, but waited a couple of years until she was nine. And then so, oh, he must have been waiting for something. What was he waiting for? He must have been waiting for her to reach puberty. Not what he was waiting for. It's not. According to the sources, she hadn't reached puberty, and puberty isn't required, according to the Quran. It, the, the thing is, um, if you, like, once you teach somebody like uh like this muslim cowboy once you teach him about the reality of this uh, situation um what he will do is not to say oh okay well you know i was wrong i was yep. wrong no mm -hmm. this is about uh you know even uh marrying a a prepubescent and having sex with her uh i was uh, and that is obviously unacceptable no what he will do is he will say okay i was i was probably wrong about that he will not say that publicly uh he will simply change his mind and think well okay i guess it is okay to marry and have sex with a prepubescent pre pre because well aisha didn't complain indeed oh, hang on did want to do one comment real quick uh where is it where is it where's where's brenda oh here we go uh so we have lying brenda here brenda says mary was 10 years old when joseph married her at 93 years old that is just pathetic really okay brenda you're about to get blocked unless you can show us <laughs> chapter and verse that says that Give us chapter and verse. And that's not all she's doing. It's, it, it's just weird. I mean, it's funny that she calls it pathetic. Notice what we say. We're making claims about Islam. What do we do? We put source after source after source after source after source on the screen to show that we are correct. What does Brenda do? Comes here and lies. And Brenda is probably what? Like Fareed or somebody? Uh, Brenda... Or, or the, I was just going to say that the, the, you, you are calling yeah. her a she, but it's probably like Muhammad Abdullah yeah. Yeah. or something. something. <laughs> and, 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 and she also makes this claim. Isaac was 40 when he married Rebecca when she was three years old. Genesis 25, 2. Except show us that in Genesis 25, 2, Brenda. Quote Genesis 25, 2, saying that Rebecca was three years old. 
Rebecca, I'm going to give you an option. Show us chapter and verse for either one of those claims, either one of them, either one of them, and I'll let you stay. I will let you stay forever. I will let you come on here and lie all day, every day, if you just show us a source for one of those claims. One. How dare you, Oh, Rebecca. hey, 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 AP, hey, this has become a thing recently, too. Remember this? Brenda, now look, she says, provide your evidence that Mary was not 10. <laughs> we have we have no source on Mary on on the age of Mary. What we do know is that according to rabbinic law she would not have been allowed to marry before the age of 12. So 12 is that's not like the average age. Girls did wait till longer. That would have been the bare minimum to even talk about marriage. Would have been at 12 years old. So, Brenda, defend one of them. Defend one. Defend one or the other. I'm, I, I don't know how generous I could possibly be. What's she doing? She's Googling right now. Oh, let me find it. Maybe I can find it. You mean he? Oh, yeah, he. So Fareed or whoever this is. Darn All right, I'm, I'm going to give you another. I'm going to give you another 20 seconds. I, you heard it recently. Daniel Kikachu basically uh, told me that he's watching our streams, which is why he knows that we always That's talk about the that, that is probably Daniel Kikachu who says, says the exact same things, right? Yeah, yeah. Guys, when, when we're when we're talking about uh Brenda here, Brenda, uh oh, she's still posting. Robert, three-year-old bride, see what I mean? Absolutely disgusting. Okay, Brenda, you can't sit. notice, guys. I'm not setting the bar very high. I'm just saying show us that you're not lying. You made a claim. You and and, and the Muslims, they say we respect Mary. We respect Mary more than you. We respect them. We respect the prophets more than you. What do they do? Lie, 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 lie. And they think it's fine. You know what you'll lie, never lie, see? Lie, you'll, lie. you'll never see, you'll never see a, a Dawah person lying about a prophet. Abraham, Isaac, Moses, it doesn't matter. They'll lie. They'll lie about Mary. They'll lie about Jesus. And you can completely expose them. It doesn't bother them even slightly. It doesn't bother their followers even slightly. And we have to wonder what this religion is where the greatest thing that you can do for your God is to constantly lie about people you claim to respect. What is this? What Lying is this is, stuff? No. Isn't, it, isn't, isn't this weird, though? I mean, AP, you're, you're an outsider here. So you're, you're an atheist, right? But you've got, it's, it's, we respect Jesus, we respect Mary. Okay, what do you do about that? We lie about them constantly. We say they're all pedophiles. Every one of them was banging little girls. Oh, yes, Isaac was banging a little three-year-old. Mary was a little girl. She was getting banged. And it's like, what, what do you mean by respect? Because it sounds like what you mean when you say you respect someone is what everyone else would mean by like despising someone so much that you constantly lie about them and falsely accuse them. I always yeah. feel like, I always feel like I live in opposite world with uh with uh with Islam. So anyway, uh, go through a couple more sources here. Sahih oh, Muslim oh, thirty four eighty. It was narrated that Aisha said the Prophet married me when I was six years old and consummated the marriage with me when I was nine years old. Check this, guys, don't miss this, because in the other hadith we read in Sahih al Bukhari where you had the commentary from Ibn Hajar al Asqalani saying that. Uh, uh, that uh, Aisha was allowed to play with dolls because she hadn't reached puberty. They'll say, ah, but it doesn't say that, she, you know, th this could have been before the marriage. And maybe she was, this was just when she was a little girl that she was playing with these dolls, right? In other words, oh, maybe she was three. Maybe that's talking about when she was three. And this is not when they're married. What does Sahih Muslim 3481 say? It was narrated from Aisha that the prophet married her when she was seven years old and she was taken to him as a bride when she was nine years old and she took her dolls with her. He died when she was 18 years old. Guys, why is it relevant to say that Aisha took dolls with her when she's taken to Muhammad to consummate the marriage? Why would you include that? She could have taken anything, right? She, and she probably had other stuff. She had clothes. It didn't say she took her clothes with her. It says she took her dolls with her. Why? Why, why does it say that? It says it because that's how you would say someone hadn't reached puberty. That's how you indicate that someone had that a girl hadn't reached puberty. She's still playing with dolls. And that's exactly what it says. And again, again, what I just said, that's not according to me. That's according to Ibn Hajar al Asqalani, who's considered the greatest hadith authority possibly in Islamic history. But no, the Muslim cowboy, everyone knows better. He's the Muslim cowboy. And Rosie, she knows better. Basically, anyone who converted recently knows more than the greatest Muslim scholars of all time in their own minds. This is wild stuff. Dolls. 3482, 
The Messenger of Allah married her when she was six years old and consummated the marriage with her when she was nine years old, and he died when she was 18 years old. She was nine known. years old. She was nine years old. The Messenger of Allah married me when I was a girl of seven years. Suleiman, one of the narrators, said, or six, and consummated the marriage when I was a girl of nine. That's Sunan Abu Dawud. Sunan Nasai, 3380, was narrated. Aisha said, the Messenger of Allah married me when I was six and consummated the marriage with me when I was nine, and I used to play with dolls because I hadn't reached puberty. This is History of At-Tabri. Volume 39, page 171. The Prophet married Aisha in Shawal in the tenth year after the beginning of his prophethood, three years before the emigration. He consummated the marriage in Shawal eight months after the emigration. On the day he consummated the marriage with her, she was nine, nine years, years old. old. And so, guys, there are endless hadiths. Just so you know, there are about two, there are over 200 hadiths on the age of Aisha. Alhamdulillah. But that's not the only issue. You heard of the Quran, AP? What? You heard of the Quran? No, what, what's, what's that? Our friend, our good friend, the Muslim cowboy, he uh -huh. apparently is not familiar with the Quran. Isn't that weird? What, what is the Quran? What does it say? Uh, yeah, so we saw in Sahih al-Bukhari 5133 that Bukhari... In his chapter introduction, right before he talks about Muhammad having sex with Aisha, he cites Surah 65, verse 4, to talk about marrying prepubescent girls. Now, what's going on there? Let's go ahead and read Surah 65, verse 4. And everyone can recall, our good friend Muhammad Hijab cited Surah 65, verse 4, saying that there, there is no requirement for puberty, and he said you can't get around it. Not in the Quran, not in the Hadith. There is no requirement to wait till a girl has reached puberty. I'm hammering this point because you got people like the new converts, Rosie, uh, the Muslim cowboy. They think, they think that that's a requirement because they heard it from a Dawah guy years ago, and they thought it was true, and it never crossed their minds to look anything up. Surah 65, verse 4. And though, so, little background here. Uh, Muhammad had already received a revelation saying that if you're going to divorce a woman, then you have to wait three monthly menstrual cycles before she can marry again. So you're going to divorce a girl. Before she can marry again, she has to wait three monthly menstrual cycles. Then the question arose. A question arose. What about, what about our wives' that don't have a monthly menstrual cycle and we're going to divorce them, how is this going to work? And there are three categories, there are three categories that people asked him about. One, women who are too old to have a monthly menstrual cycle, they've gone through uh, menopause. Two, girls who are too young to have a monthly menstrual cycle, so they're prepubescent. And three, women who are pregnant, so they don't have a monthly menstrual cycle anymore. What about, what about divorcing those girls? And keep in mind, this is about divorcing them. How long do they have to wait before they can remarry? And so Surah 65, verse 4. And those of your women as have passed the age of monthly courses. So these are uh, women who have passed the age of monthly courses. So women who have gone through menopause. For them, the Idda, since they don't have a monthly, the Idda, again, is the uh, waiting period. The Idda, since it can't be three monthly menstrual cycles because they don't have monthly menstrual cycles, for them, the Idda, the prescribed period, if you have doubt about their periods, is three months. And, step number two, and for those who have no courses, i.e. they are still immature, no courses, they have no monthly menstrual cycle because they're immature, their Idda, prescribed period, is three months likewise, except in the case of death. And then it goes on to talk about the ruling for pregnant for pregnant women all right now ap yeah that That's is good. that is a port like so much of the quran that is a you know it's kind of awkwardly worded and so on so i want to point out one we know the historical background of that verse we know what's being answered if you just read that a muslim could argue oh, that's not what it means or something like that uh that's actually not you, we've already seen how bukhari interpreted it. He interpreted it as justification for marrying prepubescent girls, specifically says before puberty. Uh, and he applies that to Muhammad and Aisha. 
Just wanted to point, we'll go to, we'll read three quick commentaries, all on Surah 65, verse four of the Quran, just so, and hey, Muslim cowboy, if you want 20 more, if you want 20 more commentaries, just ask, I would be happy to put them all into a video, in, into a video. We'll just read three, some of the most popular Muslim commentaries of all time. So this is Ibn Abbas, Tafsir of Ibn Abbas on Surah 65, verse four. He says, and for such of your women as despair of menstruation because of old age, if you doubt about their waiting period, their period of waiting shall be three months, not three monthly, monthly menstrual cycles. They don't have it. Three months. Upon which another man asked, O messenger of Allah, what about the waiting period of those who do not have menstruation because they are too young? Why don't they have menstruation? Because of a medical disorder? No, they don't have menstruation because they are too young. Along with those who have it not because of young age, their waiting period is three months. Notice what you see how Islam solves everything here. It's like uh, you, you can often see in early Islamic uh, texts and in the Quran even uh, the, that the the pre-Islamic pagans pre-Islamic pagans, they were out of poverty, out of despair. They were uh, apparently, some of them were, were burying their newborn daughters because they couldn't take care of them. And this was, of course, a terrible thing. It is, definitely. And Islam finally came and allegedly put an end to this. It decided to say, hey, don't bury your daughters. Marry them. Have sex with them. Mm -hmm. Easy solution. See, this is how Islam solves every problem in society. Yeah, would, wouldn't this have been great? So Muhammad starts off his revelation, which uh, which would have been an important question, right? So, hey, you've been told when you divorce a woman, wait three monthly menstrual cycles, right? And so someone wants mm -hmm. to ask, wait a minute, uh, I, I want to divorce uh, my wife and she's gone through menopause. She doesn't have a monthly menstrual cycle. What, what What's up with that? So notice how this could have gone. So... Muhammad could have started receiving, and by the way, if you if you read the commentary a bit earlier, someone did ask him that, and that's why he started receiving this revelation. So someone asked him, "Hey, what about what about women who are too old to have a monthly menstrual cycle? What about that?" And then you have the answer. Notice how this could have gone. It could have gone like this. And for such of your women as despair of menstruation because of old age, if ye doubt about their waiting period, their period of waiting shall be three months. Upon which another man asked, "O oh, messenger of Allah." Oh, pattern of conduct for all people. What about the waiting period of those who do not have menstruation because they are too young? Then Muhammad, influenced by the Muslim cowboy, said, What? How could you be having sex with girls, marrying them before they have menstruation? That's not what are Islam teaches. Saying? You have to wait for their period. That's when they become women. But he didn't say that, did he? Why? Because Islam is not, has, has never been, and never will be defined by the Muslim cowboy's imagination. Or Muhammad forgot it. Forgot yep. to say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he forgot, he forgot to point that out. So that's Ibn Abbas, Muhammad's companion. This is considered by many to be the greatest commentary of all time. Ibn Kathir, Tafsir of Ibn Kathir. The idda of those in menopause and those who do not have menses. Allah the Exalted clarifies the waiting period of the woman in menopause, and that is the one whose menstruation has stopped due to her older age. Her idda is three months instead of three monthly cycles for those who menstruate, which is based upon the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah 2.228. The same for the young who have not reached the years of menstruation their idda is three months like those in menopause. What? Notice Ibn Kathir doesn't say, uh, but you can't say that about the young because we don't molest little girls. No, we would never do that. Isn't this funny? Because uh, these passages are all, and the child this, and the and the young girl this, and so on. And then you've got the Muslim cowboy correcting them all. No, the women say women. Liars, liars say we're talking about children. No, liars say we're talking about the young. Liars, it's all grown women. They're women through and through. <laughs> and he, he considers himself a higher authority than the greatest commentators in the history of Islam. They, they have taken their scholars and their preachers and apologists and cowboys as lords beside Allah. Shame on them. This is Tafsir Jalalain, the two Jalals. 
And as for those of your women who no longer, gives a textual variant there, no longer expect to menstruate, if ye have any doubts about their waiting period, their prescribed waiting period shall be three months. And also for those who have not yet menstruated because of their young age, their period shall also be three months. This is talking about girls who have not menstruated because they're too young to have a monthly menstrual cycle. Uh, what did our good friend say? Let's go back to a Muslim cowboy. A woman is a woman when they hit puberty. Making it, making a certain age a number is arbitrary and makes no sense. No, Muslim cowboy, what makes no sense is you talking about hitting a woman becoming a woman when she hits puberty. That's false. That's false. A nine-year-old can hit puberty. A nine-year-old who hits puberty is going to be developing for several years before she becomes a woman. So you have no clue what you're talking about. Uh, the second thing is we could agree with you and say, yes, a woman is a woman as soon as she hits puberty. But Islam doesn't require that. And Muhammad didn't do it. Muhammad didn't wait until Aisha reached puberty. He waited until he was convinced that he could penetrate her without tearing her open. That's what he waited for. And that's what the Muslim cowboy is defending. That's what his life is dedicated to. Now, defending sex with prepubescent girls and deceiving, deceiving people by pretending that Islam tells you to wait till puberty when Islam does not tell you to, read to wait till puberty. But maybe, maybe he does. Maybe he does know better than Allah and Muhammad and Bukhari and, Mus and Imam Muslim and Abu Dawood and Ibn Kathir and uh, the two Jalals and Ibn Abba. He knows better than all of them. And Muhammad Ijal. He knows better than all of them. Muslim cowboy just converted and now he knows better he than everyone. He is the, stand the all-time ultimate standard of what Islam teaches. Wild stuff. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Wild, 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 powerful stuff. I don't know. This kind of this, all of this kind of sounds kind of weird because it look it sounds like you are suggesting, it sounds like you are suggesting, if that, the trajectory continues, that Islam is uh, Islam has contains pedophilia or advocates pedophilia, and that just sounds ridiculous. Can't be true. That that that's very racist. It's gross. It's racist, as uh, Ben Affleck would have said. It. Mm -hmm. So. Ladies and gentlemen, the actual position of Islam, Muhammad Hijab is right. If you just went with the Quran, you wouldn't think there's any, you wouldn't think there's any sort of rule about what you can do. You would say, oh, this guy says I can, uh, I can bang his three-year-old daughter. This guy's been influenced by the Dawah guys. He thinks I can bang his three-year-old daughter. Why not? Why not? That's what you would think from the Quran. But the Quran is not the only source. Muslims do believe in the example of Muhammad. Was Muhammad waiting for Aisha to reach puberty? No, he was waiting to where he wouldn't massively damage her physically. He wasn't waiting to not hurt her or something like that, or waiting for her to not be in danger. It was just, hey, how can I avoid completely ripping her open? So you have the that's the position of us. That's the position of Islam. Just don't if you if you're if you're marrying a, a girl, wait until you are not going to turn two holes into one hole. Wait until then. That's the requirement. So that's what Islam really teaches. And then you have the Daniel Hakikachus, who say you're waiting for some sort of, of sign of maturity. Um, not what Islam requires. Horrible teaching, but better than his prophet. You've got uh, the Muslim cowboy in Ali Dawa. We wait till a girl has, you know, has reached puberty. Nice. Uh, nicer than what Islam teaches. Still absolutely despicable. And of course, uh, fortunately, fortunately, you do have Muslims who don't, who, who, who treat their daughters better than pig farmers treat pigs. Yeah. The, da the Dawah guys, as we've seen, treat their daughters and wives worse than pig farmers treat pigs. Pig farmers understand once a pig is in heat, that does not mean you start, you start breeding the pig. Wild stuff. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. They should be starting as soon as the pig comes out. 
because that's what we do. And AP, we're we are actually going. I mean, fortunately, things like it seems like more people are catching on more rapidly. Because I'm just thinking, like, as long as it took us to get them to admit that Islam does teach that Muhammad had sex with a nine year old girl, like, how long is it going to take us to correct all these other lies that they're spreading now? Because they see the a Dawa guy will admit as much as he has to admit based on what has become somewhat common knowledge. And he can't lie about it anymore because too many people know about it. But that's all he'll admit and he'll still spread lies uh, until the new lie has been exposed and to so many people that he can't do it anymore. So it's so I'm thinking like, how long is it going to take before we don't have to do this anymore? Uh, and I'm thinking, gosh, given how long it took to just to get here, how long is it going to take? But it seems to be accelerating. Like the the, the speed at which we are exposing their lies. I mean, we saw the collapse of the perfect preservation. We saw the collapse of the scientific miracles argument. We're seeing the avalanche of apostasy. Uh, they're all defending child marriage. You know, it seems like it's accelerating. So that could be good news. The thing is, you you, you would expect um, these, you know, the, the Muslims who are not okay with this kind of stuff to be, uh, to at some point, uh, you know, see this and um, turn away or you know, see their fellow Muslim apologists go into this direction of actually defending and justifying pedophilia and say, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm out of there. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm not doing that. But uh, it's, they, they, they begin, they join in with the fun and, uh, and justify it as well. And it becomes a popular Islamic position to justify it. Though, of course, the good thing is that the outsiders are then more and more exposed to this stuff, which is why I recently in a debate with Daniel Kikic, for example, uh, deliberately tricked him into defending pedophilia <laughs> in what front a, of a no. completely unfamiliar audience. Uh, and, and people were then disgusted and disturbed. Um, that is the good aspect. But the, the, the terrible thing is that Muslims will still be okay with it, still stay within it. And I don't know, my explanation to that is just, you You would probably say, you know, humans are wicked and this and that. And Don't tell, um, me, don't tell me what I would say. Yeah, tell me you what would, you think I would say based on your ignorance. No, no I, I'm, I know for a fact that you would say you know, humans are wicked. I know this. How, how dare you suggest otherwise? Um, to me, it just shows that this is what this is how people are you know it's they, they are just ready to accept anything um and once they accept a certain worldview it doesn't really matter what the values they hold they will just adjust their values to, to to fit their their worldview which they adopted for some for some reason for mm -hmm. some reason often not for the best reasons mm -hmm. and lots of times with some of the new converts it's just as eh, an easy way to get attention yeah this is, uh, I actually wanted to spend more time. Uh, Chris Rock in a comedy special gave a, an awesome analysis. He's saying, we're creating a world where everyone is addicted to attention. And he said, but there are only so many ways to get attention. So one, he says, he says it more graphically, but he says, show your rear end. And what he means by that is if you're just, you know, if you're hot, you can, you can get by on uh, OnlyFans or Instagram or something like that. You can, you know, you be, you could be a Kardashian and, and, Based. and, and uh, get plenty of attention based on how you look. Uh, another one was you could be the bet. You could be awesome at something, right? So he talks about the the Williams sisters in tennis. It's like they 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 got where they were by being the best at something. But he points out, notice it's way more work. It's a huge amount of work to be the the best at something. So it could be easier to uh, you know just take off your clothes and show off what you got and stuff. Uh, but what what's relevant is one of the way one of the ways to get attention that he listed was to be a victim. So you can be a victim. You could put yourself in the victim category, and all of a sudden you'll you'll get plenty of you'll get plenty of attention as a victim. And uh, I think a lot of these things are kind of working together. Where, hey, if I convert to Islam, I'm instantly going to get a ton of attention, and I'm going to be criticized. But that criticism will show that I'm a victim. So you're getting the attention you crave, and you get to portray yourself as a victim, all just by saying La ilaha illallah. That's it. Now I'm a, now I'm in the victim category. Woohoo! And I'll get tons of attention. And you can see the Muslim cowboy. <laughs> like, oh, look at all this attention I'm getting just by defending child marriage. Yeah, if you, if you want attention, you can, you can get it. All right. Let's go through some more super chats. I think that's pretty much all the content we wanted to cover. So we've shown that the Muslim cowboy has no clue what he's talking about as far as biology, anthropology, any of that stuff. And he has no clue what he's talking about as far as Islam. And the correct thing for him to do would either be 
to leave Islam, to leave Islam, uh, or uh, or to update his position and say, "Oopsie, actually, you don't need to wait. You don't need to wait until a girl has reached puberty. Uh, you can just start banging her whenever you think you're not going to rip her open." Look at this, by the way. Remember this? That's pretty bad. The disbelievers think we should be ashamed of some things in Islam. There is not a single thing our prophet did that I myself wouldn't do. This is submission. This is the way. He understands that Islam is defined as submission. You just have to mindlessly obey everything Muhammad said and did. Well, Muslim cowboy, you didn't hear it from anyone else, but you heard it from us, that your prophet had sex with a prepubescent girl. And so, if you're saying, no, you have to wait till puberty, what's that called? That's not called submission. That's called innovation. Innovation. You're making up your own rules. And you probably don't know this either because you don't seem to know what's in your sources. But Muhammad said, every innovator goes to hell. Innovation is a one-way ticket mm -hmm. to hell. And you're an innovator. So you should correct your position. We would recommend you just leave Islam and not have to defend this nonsense. But if you yeah. want to still adhere to, uh, if you want to still be a Muslim and still believe, nope, I just have to submit whatever Muhammad did. Okay, then puberty is not a requirement. Stop saying that. Alhamdulillah. That's Stop. In other words, In other words, you may not have known before, so you may have been ignorant. You're not ignorant anymore if you watch this and we know you're watching it. So what's that mean? If you say it now, if you continue to pretend that Muhammad waited until I should reach puberty and that this is the rule in Islam, now we cannot give you the benefit of the doubt and, and assume that you don't know what you're talking about. Now we we would have to assume that you are a, a liar, which again, would, would you would fit in perfectly in the Dawah community. They love two things, ignorance and deception. You wonder, you wonder why the true religion would need that. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. L here says, uh, does the logic work the other way around? If they show signs of immaturity, can we consider them a child? That's nice. <laughs> if someone has signs of immaturity, can we say they're a child? Yeah, uh, I think you, well, no. I mean, no, Daniel Hakikachu wouldn't say that, but yeah, you can think of it. It wouldn't work very well because we all have signs of immaturity. But no, I, I mean, think about how absurd that is. If she shows signs of maturity, she's a fully grown adult, you can start banging her. Okay, well, if some, if an adult shows signs of immaturity, do you conclude she's a child? No, you can't conclude just because, isn't that weird? Now, if there are signs, if then there are we can signs. start banging. Muslim cowboy as a Western Muslim brings a whole new meaning to the wild, wild west. The wild, wild west. I like to go downtown. 129th Street. Uh, Mr. L says, Mr. L, because in that case, if it is true, I officially adopted Daniel Choo Choo. Now AP can legally in Islam marry him till he can walk. I approve. <laughs> Man. Till he can't walk. <laughs> okay. I'm yep. thinking of getting a second soda from the fridge. I need parental supervision slash consent. May one of you give me parental consent? Wait, my excursion to the fridge is my personal jihad. Consent void. <laughs> That's All good. sorts of loopholes. Uh, Beatrice says a ped network has been discovered in Hollywood. Do you think it had anything to do with some of their people defending child marriage? No, I'm pretty sure uh, there's always been a bunch of perverts there in Hollywood. This is a good area for uh, for the Jordan Peterson stuff about people with the dark tetrad of personality traits infiltrating areas where they can exploit other exploit and manipulate other people. One way to really help that is to be in positions of power. And so you have some people who gravitate towards just, you know, you could be a police officer and be a total, total sicko uh, who gets off on, you know, screwing with other people. Uh, but, you know, you could be a, a Hollywood producer as well. Velvet Jazz. These days, average age for menarche is 13. My mother was nine. That's hard for a child to deal with. Cuts into childhood. So glad I never experienced the horrors of child marriage. We'll be praying for those poor victims. And one of the worst things is that these guys believe that they can have multiple wives and that 
even though it's illegal, you just do it through the mosque. So even here in the U in, in, in America and the UK, there are the Dawah guys and their followers. They believe they can have second, third, fourth wives. That's, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty obvious according to Islam. Some people believe that they have to follow the laws of the land and so on. But on this issue, they just, okay, we're getting married through the mosque. Well, if you have a bunch of guys who are having daughters and they believe that you can do secret marriages in the mosque and that you can even keep these wives separate, secret from your other wives and so on, and they believe that you can marry five, six, seven, eight-year-old girls, what in the world is going on behind the scenes? We don't know, but I'm betting it's pretty, pretty bad. Malcolm says, we are all attempting to be rational with irrational people. And we, we, we strive after the little bit of common sense that might be remaining in there. Uh, we, we try to get them to agree mm -hmm. that having sex with prepubescent girls is bad, but it's hard work. Uh, Wait, it's I, bad? Yeah. Oh, okay. Didn't... Did you miss that whole part? Uh, I like the Muslim cowboy. He helped the disbelievers stay further away from cancer. That does seem like it's going to head in that direction. Like they get, you know, you do have the people who are like, oh, they're saying it's, they're, they're saying they're going to kill apostates and they're saying all this stuff. They're based. I'm guessing it's going to be a bigger reaction of, oh, this is sick stuff that you guys are talking about. This is making me really, really not trust this stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's you know what's so funny recently um, didn't Ali Dawa say that uh, you know Sharia is good and uh, people should convert to Islam because they will do good things like taking care of the of their of their grandparents mm -hmm. uh, and not all the you know chopping up people and all of that kind yeah. of Sharia which you always hear from the from people this is so weird that he's saying this a few months after he had just announced that yes. Now people are joining Islam because of its intolerance, mm -hmm. because people like people want to have some intolerance. That's why they're joining Islam. Yeah. Yes, we, we are proud of executing apostates. Now they're suddenly going back to, oh, no, not the bad stuff, only the yeah. good stuff, yeah. plus child marriage. <laughs> yeah, you need to put all that stuff together into a live stream because it's, uh, guys, what he's talking about there, Ali Dawa, when he's talking to AP, uh, yeah, we're going to, we're going to, yeah. W once we rise to power, once we get Sharia, we're going to chop your head off. We're going to be chopping and keep in mind, you're talking about millions of apostates. They're going to start chopping their heads off. Right. But then when he's talking, he's talking to people, he's trying to appeal to their emotions to defend Sharia. And there's this clip where he's just going, you need Sharia because Sharia will tell you that you got to take care of old people. See, you need Sharia. You, 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 you're dying for Sharia. You need it. It's so important. And he specifically says, as AP pointed out, and we're not talking about the, what the Sharia people think is there, like you're chopping people up. And no, it's it's all about helping people. And like, what a liar. I mean, he's th that dude has to, that's not ignorance. That has to, that is a dude who knows he is lying. Yeah. Who knows that whatever group he's talking to, he will lie. He will say whatever he thinks is most appealing to them and not care at all. Uh, about whether it agrees with what he said yesterday to a completely different group. And that's why he's so popular. Like the bigger a liar you are, the more popular you become in Dawah. That's how it is. It's beautiful. Yep. Powerful stuff. Up oh, Chaos had a question for IP, who's not here anymore. IP is a I father. Do. How hard was it not to hurt Daniel when he was defending child marriage? Uh, yeah, Daniel's a big dude. Uh, IP smaller, but IP's a, a black belt. Um, so I, I, I would guess he would kick the crap out of Muhammad Hijab. But I mean, uh, not Muhammad Hijab. Uh, uh, Daniel Hakikachu. Yeah, but imagine that. Imagine it, you, it is. Kind, I, I do think it's kind of. Now I'm glad that we can actually just be exposing this stuff. But there's a part of me that wonders why do why do people put up with this? Like, imagine it's like what you just spend child marriage. What the heck are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how these guys aren't just getting knocked out running. Around. I mean, they're running around defending pedophilia. I, th I, th I think it's probably happening. I'm, yeah, I'm not. I'm not advocating. I'm not. Adv I'm not advocating a violent response. But I would think that someone's just going to. I think they're going to run into the wrong guy one day and just going to be like, "What'd you just say?" Wait, 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 wait. Just to clarify, you're, you're defending sex with five with five year olds. I, I think. I, I think they'll probably just get knocked out at some point. So we're not saying we would do it, but you know. 
You think we don't have gangsters? No, I'm not. And I, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't want it to happen. I'm just, there are people who instant, like, I, I'll tell you, if you, if you, if you went into prison running your mouth about that, you're going to, you're going to have a pretty miserable life real quick. You walk up in there thinking that you can defend pedophilia or anyone who's, anyone who's been to prison for a long time. I can tell you from experience, it's going to be a little difficult sitting around while some guy, hey, you know, molesting little kids is cool. He's the Muslim cowboy. He's got a cowboy hat on. It's okay. Well, it's good to molest little girls. But you know, we, we, you think we don't have gangsters? We've got yeah. gangsters. Uh, Kevin here. AP, what's that Hebrew say? Uh, <laughs> uh, farmhouse theologian. Oh, man, we still got some more. Uh, yeah, let's go through some rapid fire. There are reformers in Islamic countries trying to abolish child marriage. Good. I hope they are successful. They're usually women. That's true. Putting their lives in danger. Shouldn't we grant them a platform if child marriage is despicable to us? I would be yeah. happy to agree with every every Muslim who wants to say child marriage is wrong. I will agree with that Muslim man I, or woman that child marriage is wrong. I don't. Too bad. Michael Darwin says, I saw IP's debate with Daniel in person and I loved his Chris Hansen opening. Y'all should get Hansen on the channel and have him react to these clips. Yeah, we could, but I'll just dress up as Chris Hansen. I think I have to lose maybe 20 pounds to be a skinny. Chris it's easier. Why invite him when, when you can just be him? Yeah, I could just imitate uh, him. Yeah. Excuse <clears throat> me. I have a question. Third <laughs> Orange says, where's I, Miss... I, I want... Honestly, when I say uh, that I'm not really open to having uh, people like that on, reformers, I don't know. I, I, I know. I think you're, some, you're selfish. Some, something kind of happened recently, I guess, which is that, uh, I don't know, my stance has kind of changed from, oh, yeah, I'm just open to talking yeah, to all of You become nice more intolerant. Into, into, you know what, do something. How about turn away from Islam and then we can talk. I just, I don't have time for that anymore. <laughs> It is interesting. It is interesting that people get to a certain point where they're just like, "I'm not. I'm not going that direction." Yeah. It's it's like it's like Israel when when they start doing the settlements, right? The people who are you know the the ones who are going out and saying, "Ah, we're gonna we're gonna go over to the West Bank and, and make some of our own settlements." Those are people who are saying, "I'm not working towards a two state solution anymore. I'm giving up on that. I'm I'm not yeah. working with you. I'm not working with you guys anymore. I'm done. I'm done working with you. I'm done trying to look for a future." Where we're all going to work together because I, you've con, you've convinced me that it's never going to happen. You've convinced me, so I'm done. I'm not working with you guys anymore. You can uh, see that in the history of the of the of the research of public opinion among Israelis. In the past, Israelis were mostly in favor of a two state solution. They mostly thought uh, it is future to it, it is possible to build a future, or even desirable to build a future where there are two states, uh, a Jewish state and an Arab state that live side by side in peace. That's what people believed. There has recently been a poll where um, now only a small minority of Israelis actually still believe that. Most of them think there is no uh, possibility for a two-state solution and uh, we, we should be done trying it because it obviously won't work. So let's just stick with um, not allowing that. That, that that's, what, that's what it leads to. And I, I feel like I, I'm also at, at that position after uh much of what happened recently when it comes to these debates and discussions in general mm -hmm. yeah and i'm a i'm a guy who i mean i would love to see a two-state solution but i can't even object to someone who's saying not going to work look at look at what we're up against it's never going to work so we're not working towards that anymore i can't even i can't even say no you're wrong because it does look pretty pretty bad uh Third Orange says, where's Miss Ninja Lady? Too many Marys. We need to have her as a guest more often. Blah, blah, blah. Leather straps, the cow. You see, sir, white meat. Uh, yeah, Mary's good. She's one, she's one of a handful of people who, I mean, it's a limited number of people. So it's like uh, IP is one of them. People just like can read a ton of stuff, absorb all of it, remember all the relevant details and stuff. There's him. Sam Shimon's like that. Anthony's like that to an extent. And Mary from Too Many Marys is like that. Um, she's insane. So she's like she's like um, like IP. I would say from the two people that I've encountered who are like that. But she a woman is, who, according to Muhammad, has half the brain full, of a man. So that's weird. I know. So she's so she in, a weird, in a weird way. Yeah, in a weird way, her half brain is uh, is twice as smart as everyone else's because 
I mean, it, yeah. it's 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 twice as smart because she's got half the brain, according to Islam, and yet she's as smart as like really, really smart guys. Oh, but but keep in mind, guys, keep in mind. Uh, over on Thaddeus's channel, he goes he goes live with uh with uh Mary pretty regularly, so you can always you can always catch Mary over on Thaddeus's channel. But yeah, I'm sure we will be having her uh her her back. Uh, D good, D bad, and D ugly talking about the pedo boy. <laughs> Uh, thanks. Some support for the consistent and tireless battle. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I really hope we don't, we're not sitting here like 20 years from now doing the exact same thing. Okay, now we're going to expose this lot. I'm hoping that oh we my actually... Gosh. And this, this should... I encourage... Of apostasy. <laughs> I encourage some of you younger people to get involved and to become way awesomer than us so we can retire at some point. And cheer you on. And cheer you on. So we could be sitting there in the chat sending you the super shekels. Yeah. Many Muslims do have conscience that child marriage is immoral, but as Muslims, they can't deny Muhammad, uh, like denying Jesus, uh, means reject Christianity. That is a difficult position. So as a Muslim, you could be like, yeah, that, there's something not, this is not right. And then you find out Muhammad did it. And, huh, what do I do? I mean... I believe in Muhammad, so I can't I can't condemn him because then I'm that's going to make me not a Muslim, and so I just I I just have to accept something that I believe is wrong. And would I ever do that? I wouldn't do that. So therefore, yeah. Um, what's Christian stance on age for marriage, David, or any proof from Christian view? There are people who who try to make a case like specifically from the Bible, like there's a passage in Ezekiel that talks about the age of a, the age of love, but it describes a fully grown woman with like full breasts and, and so on. So it describes an adult woman. There are people who will make that case or they'll, they'll point out that, you know, it was God creates Eve as a fully grown woman, not as a little, a little child or something like that. Uh, I, I'm thinking just, I'm thinking along the lines of general principles, like do unto others as, as you would have them do unto you uh, versus about not harming other people. Uh, there, I mean, there are passages about, you know, what would happen if you lead a, a child astray and things like that. It'd be better off to have a millstone hung around your neck and tossed into the ocean and so on. But just general principles. Christian, keep in mind, Islam is rule based, right? If you don't have a rule, you don't know anything. You don't you, you can't you can't possibly know unless you have a command from God. You can't know what you're supposed to do in any situation. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how obvious it seems to you. You can't know without without God telling you. Christianity is more principle based it gives you a principle so i don't need 50,000 rules i can know okay love my neighbor as myself um do unto others as i would have them do unto you and you can actually figure out i mean you have rules you have rules about not stealing stuff but you you can you can uh you could you could figure this out would i want someone stealing from me no okay don't steal from other people if i were a 9 year old girl would i want some creepy old heaven's gate dude claiming to be a prophet and coming in and banging me of course no <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Okay, so if I were a nine-year-old girl, I would want, I would rather be playing and not have some old creepy dude playing with my privates, right? So I could say, okay, well, if I'm the, if I end up in the position of the creepy old dude, don't treat a little girl like that. And so it's just, I mean, it, it, that's kind of the problem with Islam. In Christianity, you can, you can include the latest scientific medical knowledge in your assessment of right and wrong. Okay, since I know, uh, since I know when it's safest for a girl to get pregnant, can I factor that into my consent? Yes. Would I want someone banging me when it's, when uh, I, you know, it's, it's not safe? No, I wouldn't. Okay, well then don't do that. Uh, in Islam, it's, they're, they're looking to Muhammad. They're looking to any commands and they don't have direct commands from Allah about this. Um, except for it's okay to have sex with a prepubescent girl. They're looking to Muhammad. And whatever whatever is said later, whatever science science shows or medical knowledge shows, if it if it confl if it conflicts with what Muhammad said or did, it's irrelevant. And that's why Islam's just got problems. You see, David would admit that hey. he has no rules. What what, what? AP admits is incest is good. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. This is a question for you. Do you ever find yourself thinking, I wish I had Ali Dawa on my side? <laughs> Every day. I was just like, oh, all these smart people. 
I mean, we got IP, you know, we got IP, we got IP's big brain on our side, but man, if we just had Ali Dab, yo, feed me some grapes. Hey, smiles to Jenna, come feed me some grapes. Yeah. Um, 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 um. Oh, what this remind me of? Um, 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 right. Yeah. We need him on our side. You know, what's funny. Uh, this reminds me of um, when I had my this this debate disaster with Adawa, uh, after which a whole war broke out between Sajid Lupim and Mohammed Hijab and Adawa because of his terrible behavior in his debate. The, uh, Mohammed Hijab made a response video to Sajid Lupim at that point, and he said something about Adawa, which I, which I find very funny. He said that you know Adawa um, might not be very you know as uh, you know, knowledgeable or, you know, whatever it is, whatever you expect from the Dawa personalities. But he has a very interesting way of appealing to the younger people, you know, to the to the to the to the kids, basically. Like to the yeah, younger people. I wonder population. why he wants to appeal to the kids. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's funny that Muhammad Hijab basically describes the value of Ali Dawa in the Dawa community by pointing out that he has this strangely uh, interesting appeal to the younger population like those who are not very you know developed and it just says everything doesn't it <laughs> yeah, tells you a lot it does make sense so mystery solved <laughs> uh i have a bunch of super chats from ravinder here uh bridegroom equals muse natural carl young or external intervention me spirit alhamdulillah there's a there's a there's a bunch of these that are like uh, combining psychology. I'm not getting this. Let me see. Husband and Lord equals oral law. Talmud uh, reared by impression. Oh, id. Oh, okay, id. Okay, id. Freud to soul. No time for soul. The duality of man. And then Satri Uncle. And then did Freud know the Talmud? Uh, Seriously, doubt Freud knew the Talmud, but I didn't. I didn't catch much of what you were saying there, Ravinder. Freud probably had no idea. Yeah, yeah. He, Freud was an atheist, so seriously doubted that he was out there studying the uh, Talmud. Emmanuel said he had his cocaine, and he was fun. He was happy with that. Um, any idea why Jews can pray in a mosque mentioned in Talmud? If so, since when and do modern Muslims allow Jews to do that? Um, I'm not familiar with Muslims allowing Jews to pray in mosques. Yeah, that wouldn't be, that probably wouldn't be allowable. Uh, Christian Fabio says, IP, stop yawning, it's unprofessional. What's unprofessional is telling IP to do stuff after he's gone. Look, he stopped. He but stopped. I already I already pointed out why we let IP go early is he goes to bed early. He goes to bed earlier. So he's getting tired. It's tiring to be on here with us when he's already tired because it's his bedtime. We stay up late. Well, actually, I stay up all night. IP is a responsible, reasonable human being who actually goes to bed at reasonable times. So, yeah. Uh, Terrible Taco is a bread tuber, a socialist YouTuber. Who was that? Was that someone in here who was uh, talking? Whoops, I don't know. I have no idea. Oh, Islamicize me too, doing every single thing Muhammad did. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can even be the Muslim cowboy. Yeah. Yeah. You see? <laughs> it is almost miraculous that a man like Muhammad could start such a large religion. Well, I mean, think about it. Look at, look at what he appeals to. Going yeah. to a bunch of guys and, hey, guys, fight for me. If you fight for me and you survive, you're going to take everyone's stuff and take their, you know, their daughters home as your sex slaves and so on. And so you're going to take all everyone's stuff. That's what we're going to do. And if you die, we're going to spend eternity deflowering virgins. That would appeal to a certain kind of people. And that's what Muhammad did. Assalamu alaikum, partner. A Turkish German atheist. Crypto Jew doing a Southern accent. Now I've seen everything. <laughs> Turkish German atheist crypto Jew doing a southern accent. Now I've seen everything. That is, you 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 may be the old you may you may be one of a kind in that. I am. Toby Toby Fox got inspiration for Undertale from Hamas. Okay. 
not familiar with Undertale. Please do reaction video to Nubby Asli. It's funny. I keep hearing that. Is it the same person recommending her? Or is this different people recommending Nubby Asli? I think it's different people. Okay. Well, if it's different people, let's remember it this time. Ha Harshal says it. If it's someone else next time, or, we'll think about it. Or maybe Nabi Asli just uh, has, has multiple accounts and That's keeps true. promoting himself through us. Yeah, we've discussed before. Uh, there, there are uh, people in the chat who uh, who make their own content, and sometimes people who like other people's content. But we'll have a live stream at some point where we just we're just going to go through people's stuff. Yeah. Uh, AP will love Ram Ranch. Uh oh, again, I want to see that. <laughs> no. Oh wait, no. Ram Ranch. Oh, <laughs> we're back to Ram Ranch. Uh, Ram Ranch is a gay cowboy song. Okay. Yeah. Hey, look at this. Look at this creepazoid. Probably one of uh, AP's fans, but uh, it's interesting that someone actually put a super chat. David, did you have to suck any blank in prison? No. <clears throat> Brett. Oh, this reminds me. Where, where did Brenda Law go? Oh, I, I banned her. I banned oh, her. I get, yeah. I said, I said, you can give a source and I'll let you stay on forever and I'll even let you uh, post complete lies. If you, can defend, if you can defend either one of your claims, she didn't, so I blocked her. Uh, yeah, as far as stuff going on in prison, it's uh, it's blown out of proportion by, like, uh, movies and so on. Like, the entire, ti the entire time I was locked up, there were only, like, two rapes ever. And in prison, I mean, keep in mind, this could be, it could be different in other places. It might be, it, it could be worse in other parts of the country and so on. Because, I, you know, you see stories in the media about guy being... Uh, raped to death and so on but yeah the entire time i was locked up i there were there were like two rapes and it's it, both times it's punishment both times it's punishment it's normally not people trying to get sex it's normally hey you crossed the line matter of fact one one of the times it was like six dudes went into a guy's cell to beat him down uh, I, I don't remember what he did but they went in there they beat the crap out of the dude and then they leave and he starts running his mouth going that ain't nothing that ain't nothing you guys seem like a bunch of blah 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 and they and all of a sudden they like walk right back into the cell and then all of a sudden it's like hey, hey what's going on hey ah! and so uh yeah that's pretty bad yeah so uh and then i'm just i'm just giving people a heads up in case anyone ends up locked up uh most guys who want to who want to bang uh young dudes who are coming in there you don't have to you don't have to rape the guys here's how it happens young guy comes in uh older inmate more experienced inmate comes up to him hey man hey you're new here hey yeah, i'll be your pal hey yeah i know you don't have any money yet because uh you know you, people didn't have time to send it and stuff uh so you need anything you need some, you need some cigarettes you want some uh you know some uh ramen noodles blah blah and just keep giving him stuff keep giving him stuff keep giving him stuff and then for like a week keeps giving him stuff and then comes back oh yeah i need all my stuff back yeah you gotta pay me Oh, you can't pay me. Hmm. Well, we're gonna have to work out some arrangement. And there, I know a method. And there, you're not, you're not, you're not raping the dude. He's, you're, 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 you're entering into a, uh, uh, an agreement. This is, this is his payment. And they, they do that to young dudes over and over again. And uh, you try to warn, you try to warn the young guys when they're coming in there. And some people are just stupid. Well, well, well. So all, all the myths, all the things that we heard about uh, everyone who goes to prison, taking a shower and dropping soap and stuff like that, that's not real? I, I mean, I can't even believe in, that that has ever actually been a thing, right? I mean, <laughs> everyone's soaking wet. And I, I mean, I saw that in a movie once with, uh, who was it, Ed Norton or something like that? They raped him in a shower. Yeah, like, yeah. wait, yeah, yeah. Ed Norton was totally shredded. And wet in a shower. <laughs> Do you have any idea how 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 hard it is to hold on to a slippery dude who's really strong? It would be very difficult. And yet, it took him like it took him like two seconds. They pin him against the wall and they rape him. Like, come on, man. <laughs> American History X is a, is a is a truthful documentary. So please, yeah. Please so please. yeah, that would be that would come across as really stupid to anyone. Again, you you don't these 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 guys who know what they're doing. They don't have to they don't have to do that to the younger guys. They can just they've got ways they got ways of grooming grooming guys. Hmm. Uh, there is a widespread conspiracy theory that all Ashkenazi Jews originate from. Turkey. Guess that's why AP is Jewish. Yes, of True. course. 
it's it's funny that this is of course one of the uh, many things that are that popularly now come up and are brought up by uh by the online islamists and then their neo-nazi friends so like oh, these are a bunch of uh bunch of khazarian uh people they're not even jewish um which is the conspiracy theory that has been refuted and debunked into oblivion it should have but hasn't been it's still in their minds it doesn't matter who debunks it and how much it is debunked but it, it's it's not credible but they still want to uh buy that conspiracy theory just because it confirms all their you know their 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 hate and whatever they have for the jews so you admit that it's all true yes by the way have you guys ever discussed thying in islam I have. Uh, I've discussed it. Uh, I remember discussing it uh, back when I used to do shows on the, the Trinity channel. It's just it's kind of a different situation because you don't have like a lot of so like if you, you want to talk about Muhammad having sex with Aisha, you have a ton of sources on that. With dying, you have like uh, Muslim scholars talking about it. And then you'll have you'll have passages that talk about fondling a virgin and fondling a virgin. It's not clear what's being talked about. And then you'll see in like, uh, uh, you know, commentaries and stuff talking about, you know, putting the penis between the girl's legs and things like that and so on. But it's not it's it's not like a situation where you say this verse, this chapter and verse, this chapter and verse, this chapter and verse of the Quran talk about thighing, the practice of thighing and here are all the hadiths on it and so on. Um, so, yeah, so talk. I don't know. I just tend to talk about more about things where I can put the sources uh, up on the screen. Hmm. You talk about thying in Islam, AP? I don't like it. <laughs> uh, no, I, I have never. I've never really talked about it. No. Yeah. Uh, is the rule of signs of maturity for boys as well in Islam, and boys being married to adult women? Nobody wants to talk about boys. We are talking mm -hmm. about men having fun. That's isn't, what matters. Isn't here. that interesting? Yeah, and all their talks about no once once you've once you once you uh, have reached puberty, it's okay to enter into marriage. And it when do you hear about oh this ten year old boy he's gotten puberty, therefore he can marry this fifty five year old woman? Like when do you when do you hear that? It's always creepy old dudes wanting to have sex with some uh, eight or nine year old girl. That you know that that's why that song goes Abdul's just want to have fun. Oh, hmm. dudes just want to have dolls. They want to. <laughs> D. Wood, you sounded like uh, Christopher Walken in your Jeffrey Epstein episode of Muhammad's Boom Boom Room. Now that you brought up more cowbell skit. Yeah, I wasn't doing uh, I wasn't trying to do Christopher Walken in that. I was originally doing it. I tried to sound like Jeffrey Epstein. I could only I could only find one clip of Jeffrey Epstein even hearing his voice. It's, it's surprisingly hard. And he has this kind of just a soft voice like this. And I started doing it like that. I was like, no, I need to do something different. I was like, I need some ridiculous accent here. And the first thing that popped into my head was uh, Snaggletooth. Uh, Snaggletooth or Snagglepuss. What was it? But, but he's the old, old cartoon. And when he would go, I don't remember what line it was on, but it reminded me of uh, Snaggletooth. And he would go, exit, stage left. And I was like, oh, I'll just do the whole thing like that. And so, uh, yeah, but that is that is a little uh, a little walk uh, My modest contribution for your next latte at Zionist Starbucks. Oh, Zionist Z World is being censored on YouTube. Oh, is it? You can't say that anymore. I mean, does it does it like block stuff if you put Zionist? Really, I don't know. Huh? IP needs a podcast called IP Too Much. <laughs> that would be well, I funny. I suggested uh, IP daily or IP every IP day. freely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> IP daily, that's good. Yeah, yeah. How does he not we I mean we have awesome ideas and how does he not go with that? People would watch it. Would you, if he just did a even if it was like a 20 minute thing, if it was just IP daily, yeah, you gotta watch yeah. it. Everyone has to watch it. it if, is, if, if that was my if that was my name, I would totally do that. IP daily, mm -hmm. IP every day. Oh, nice. It is amazing to have to cite scientific studies to prove things that are axiomatic, all because Muslims are forced to believe in madness, plus simple things like music are considered controversial. Yeah. Banging little kids? We have to defend that. Music? Oh. It's haram. 
<laughs> Romeo's dagger test. I'm a Zionist. Yeah, it's that that showed up. You're good. Hector says leather comes from cows. Muslim cowboy with his cows. Reads eyes are the leather straps of the anus. Converts to Islam. The beauty of Islam. That might be. <laughs> I, I I I'm a. He'll probably have some sort of like a conversion video or something like that. Maybe we should watch it. Maybe we should watch it in the live stream and help out the uh, help out the uh, Muslim cowboy a little more. Yeah. Prophet, prophet with mole, the child molester. Yeah. Huh. I choose the cow. Uh, inhales, cough, cough. Dang, this Muhammad pack hitting different today. Cope, Muslims, Jesus forever. Oh, by the way, when are we getting the atheist versus Christian Smash Brothers match? What's that? What is that? I don't know. Smash Bros. What's that? Is that a video game? Yeah, there's there's a thing called Super Smash Bros. That's a oh, Nintendo if you, game. If you could do atheist versus Christian, I would destroy you. That'd be fantastic. Then yeah. you'd have to convert. That would be funny. That would be funny if we did, like, okay, we're going to play one game. If I win, he has to convert to Christianity. If he wins, I become an atheist. Every all you Christians pray for this game, <laughs> and and then we publish and then we publish videos on our conversion story, how I converted, why I yeah. became a Christian. Yeah, we played uh, Super Smash Bros, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we made a bet. <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah. But when I was, but it's funny because younger. something ridiculous like that isn't isn't too much more ridiculous than some of the uh, some of the uh, Dawa conversion videos I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they told me the book was perfectly preserved. So I said, "Ooh, where do I convert? Really? When I was a little child, I, I always had my questions and my doubts about the Trinity. I mm -hmm. always thought it doesn't make much sense. And, and then, then I read said, all the religious books in the world. And then I played Super Smash Bros. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Converted. <laughs> uh, hey, D and AP, I'm an American non-religious Jew. Once the massacre, many of my friends joined the Free Palestine Movement. Do you guys think Christians will support Jews after the war ends? Anus. <laughs> what? It just ends with anus. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> that just made me dizzy because I just laughed out of nowhere. Uh, That's an awkward position here. <laughs> <laughs> that just came out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You 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 already had a mixture of Christians. You have some uh, Christians that uh, I don't know what you mean by by supporting Jews. Christians tend to get along uh, pretty well with Jews nowadays, and Christians uh, tend to uh, side with Israel quite a bit. There are Christians who don't. I don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't think the situation is going to change much after the war ends. But yeah, um, after the war, I mean, on on, it, on what? Wait, 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 on what planet are you speaking for Christians right now? I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Fine. Hey, hey, AP. Will atheists continue to support Jews? <laughs> um, Anus. The thing is. <laughs> 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 you see always these atheists bringing these oh, things boy. into conversations. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I don't even know. It's, it's even hard to tell. It's hard to tell what and how these how this war will end. What? Yeah. How long is it going to? Is it going to be something like where they spend the next three months crushing Hamas and then they move on, or is it like it's going to be like two years from now and they're still going after Hamas and it just never ends? I don't know. We will never know. Yeah, I can't uh, imagine it. I mean, just I mean, they seem to be going through it pretty systematically and hardcore and at a high rate of speed. So it seems like it's going to end at some point. Israel actually offered a, a, a ceasefire, a temporary ceasefire, uh, which Hamas re uh, just rejected. So um, <laughs> I don't know. It, they offered. And, and, and uh now there are actually news. There's like a great sadness and anger because uh, just today, today, yesterday, uh, over twenty IDF soldiers died um, in 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 an op during an operation, which is like the the deadliest day for the IDF. And 
now the government is vowing to go hardcore. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Good luck. You're going to need it, Hamas. Uh, where, what, uh, what there, uh, Hadith that Aisha was sick and went bald when she was younger and Muhammad basically waited for her hair to grow back. Uh, yes, you find this in the Hadiths. Uh, if you want to look one up, you can look up uh, Sahih al-Bukhari 3894. That's what I used in my um, Ali G. Dawa video so but, but that's got that passage there are more and you uh anytime you're looking about hadith you can just go to sunnah.com sunnah.com and type in some keywords so if you just went and posted this what you just wrote there you, it would it would probably pop up for you yeah uh for each one of you what was your favorite childhood book slash series growing up books i didn't read i i read very few books when i was young yeah, I don't, I don't remember reading very, very many books when I was a little baby. For me, it would have been like Garfield books, like the little comic strips. Like I would get the book, the book compilations. Oh, Calvin and Hobbes. I like that uh, when that came out. Uh, so, yeah, th but notice I can't even call those books. Those are comic strips, even though they're shaped like books. Uh, or if you series, I don't know if you mean like TV series. That would depend on the age. If, it was, if I was like in third grade, that would have been like Transformers. Interesting. And uh, for AP, it would have been Struel Peter. <laughs> no, uh, I, I don't remember reading many um, books when I was a kid, particularly, or, or at least not voluntarily. Uh, <laughs> um, would just watch stuff. I wouldn't even read magazines. Like, that was not my thing at all. No. Uh, just... Um, I was I was very much into the Dragon Ball series, though. I love uh, it. Yeah, I watched cartoons and shows and stuff. Never big on reading when I was a kid, unless I had to. Yeah. Um, yeah. Except for like again, comic strips and so on. But yeah, reading reading for me came uh, came later. Uh, who needs OnlyFans when you have me, bye, bye, baby? <laughs> you got that. Only games. Logical flaws. Make this make sense. Eating pork haram, but porking little children halal. Love Hatun Tasha's holes in the narrative even more. Mm -hmm. Pretty rough stuff. Uh, purest form yep. of narcissism. Victimizing yourself while actively making victims. Yeah, that is really bad. And and, and so you, you can see that with Islam. But yes, that is something narcissists will do. They will victimize everyone else. And yet... Uh, they are they are the victims of anything that could possibly go wrong. Uh, that bit about child wives and temple marriages sounds like Warren Jeffs of the, I think that's fundamentalist Latter Day Saints. I think yeah, that's yeah, name. that's that's what that's what it stands for. I was just I was thinking earlier when somebody brought up uh, Mennonites, which I never heard of them doing anything like that the only example that I, that came to my mind was precisely that the fundamentalist mormon mm -hmm. but uh for them it is it is just taking girls and marrying them it wasn't like a uh, a sex ring or anything joshua here says i'm getting it we don't take advantage we take their hand in marriage depravity in the illusion of devotion devoted to your disgusting desires Alhamdulillah. Uh, a study on world history on marriage slash sex, I concluded average was roughly 12 years. Hindu claims one third the age of husband, while Islam has no age at all. Uh, yeah, it might be interesting to share whatever you came up with with uh, IP, because he came up with a higher age for the average Unless um, unless you're talking about the entire world, and I don't know if he was talking about the entire world or like Europe or something like that. Islam was heavily influenced by Ebionism and Adoptionism and wrote Gospel of Barnabas to claim Jesus predicted Muhammad no matter how late that uh, that gospel was. Yeah, the, the Gospel of Barnabas was a late medieval forgery, and no one ever took it seriously until a Muslim found out about it. And they will still use it as a thing, like as, yeah, as evidence. Even, yeah, even though, I mean, it's 
like there's no there's no one there's no one apart from islam who takes that remotely seriously That's because it's a medieval thing. forgery written in italian not latin not greek it italian italian didn't exist in the first century ladies and gentlemen uh oops what is wrong with minor attracted persons, including organizations like NAMBLA, etc.? Uh, what's not wrong with them? Yeah, everything. That's the problem. Heavy Heart Show, Clarity on Christian Liberty. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's that mean? You asking us yeah. about Christian Liberty? No. Oh, here you go. Uh, how can you support Israel as a Christian, David, when they have killed over 30,000 Palestinians? I don't mind you, but Christ would not stand for this. David, how can you support uh, Britain when they killed so many Germans? They, they killed way more Germans than that, so we shouldn't have opposed, oh, it. We shouldn't have opposed Hitler. Yeah, we killed way killed way more Japanese than that. It should should not have happened, guys. Th these are yeah. this is war. So what you're saying is, um, if someone like Hitler or Hamas just go on killing sprees and want to take over the world, just sit back and 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 let them, exactly. let them let them get away with it. That's what you should do. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that would be the appropriate Christian response. I mean, keep in mind. So even according to Christianity, governments had obligations. Government governments have obligations; they have they bear the sword, and sometimes you have to deal with people. Uh, Nabi Asli makes good content. Hey, that's a different that's a different person. We have multiple people, unless it's all the same account cheating. So it's, it's Nabi Asli paying for all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for the constant live stream, but please upload. Yes, what are you laughing at? Nothing. Yeah, we we are live streaming a lot. We do need to upload regular videos. How will the streams change once AP turns to Christ? Well, they'll be way better because they'll instantly get like 30 extra IQ points. <laughs> he'll, 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 finally have, he'll finally have a coherent worldview and not be spending all his time defending incest and crap. Yeah, um, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, how is Sheikh Uthman still not canceled after literally banging his best friend's What wasn't his best friend, it was a friend. Literally banging his friend's wife, make it make sense. I can. Uh, there, there's no way that will have even this slight impact uh, on his popularity with his fans. It. I've been saying that for. It doesn't matter what you do. If you are, if you are owning the kufar, keep in mind, they're in this state of panic. They've got the avalanche of apostasy. They're, they're, they're terrified. They're terrified of what the future holds for Islam. Uh, they're, 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 the, the statistic from like six or seven years ago is that 24% of young Muslims are leaving Islam, right? That, that's been accelerating. So they're looking at this saying, what are things like in 10 or 20 years? And then, you know, Muhammad Hijab, Ali Dawa, Daniel Hakikatu, Sheikh Uthman, these guys come in and say, ah, we'll be your heroes. We'll protect the future and so on. Okay, if these are your saviors, if these are the guys who are going to save you from the avalanche of apostasy, you care about this guy banging his, banging his friend's wife? No, they don't. You can't. You guess what? They're going to stick with Sheikh Uthman because there's nowhere else to go. I mean, yeah, you could. Okay, we'll go with Muhammad Hijab. Or you have no good choices. You're, everyone you're dealing with is some is a very very creepy person with some really weird disturbing views who's doing all sorts of messed up stuff. That's everyone. That's everyone you could look to in Dawa. Powerful. So there's no place else to go. It doesn't matter. These guys could these guys could do whatever they want. Sheikh Uthman could bang a different guy's a different fellow Muslim's wife every week. It would never ever hurt his credibility even slightly. <laughs> the next Zakir Naik said, uh, "AP is the best YouTuber at refuting Islam." David is okay too. Well, what do you know, <laughs> dude? You're twelve. You're twelve years old. You don't know anything. <laughs> Nice. Uh, wanted to ask if you have uh, ever reached out to Cliff Neckley and having him on. Never heard of him. So how would I have, uh, Oops, how would I have reached out to him? Maybe he has the answers AP needs to bring him closer to Christ. Well, if he does, then we would need to get him on. Well, you haven't heard of Cliff Neckley? That's, no. uh, that's, that's an apologist and preacher who is, no. I don't know. Uh, it's weird because I am bad with names. I'm actually better with uh, like 
like I would I could probably remember a person's social security number before remembering the person's name. But weird names like Knechle, you figured I would remember that. But uh, yeah, <laughs> have so you heard like, of Stuart Stuart Knechle or uh, so th this guy? He has a channel. Now you're just making up your name. Have you heard of <laughs> Rippleton Hallbanks the <laughs> Third? Hmm? <laughs> No, I th I think um, Cliff Nechtle uh, has a has his own channel. It's called Ask uh, Cliff, and he's a preacher and hmm. goes around and uh, preaches to to students and uh, debates with people and all that. And he has a I think his his son, his name is Stuart. I actually debated him. What the heck? Ago. AP knows the yeah. entire family history. I've never heard of them. <laughs> That's funny. That's interesting. So, so you didn't convert. Mm, not yet. Oh, here, here we go. Hi, here are the Indian rupees we promise for the temple stream. Yes, we don't just accept shekels. We accept super rupees. Yes. Guys, I've heard it both. I've heard rupees, but on that uh, Slumdog Millionaire, the, the announcer kept saying 20 million rupees. So is it rupees or rupees? Oh, you watched Slumdog Millionaire? Yep. that's funny yeah I like horribly depressing movies um, Alhamdulillah AP and David serious question can I get 30 men strength if I draw Muhammad on my private part <laughs> you should ask that you should call uh, <laughs> you should call uh, Sheikh Asim al and ask him that question <laughs> dude do it Hey, even if you had to, even if you have to pay this like a uh, hundred dollars, 200 bucks for a half hour or something, <laughs> it'd be worth it. What's wrong with you? That's, that's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's nice. Uh, how Europe didn't understand Islam yet. Your view. Uh, I want to actually make a video on it. It's uh, longer than I want to discuss here, but it's still pretty simple and short. It, it, it goes like this. You know, you can have a Hindu society over here and a Muslim society over here and a Christian society over here and a Jewish society over here and so on. Um, if you have a society that's going to say, hey, we're going to have we're, we're going to have everyone. We're going to have everyone. Anyone's welcome of any view. Right. Like has been the goal in lots of places in the West. You there you end up with a kind of pressure not to be not to take your views too seriously or not to, you know, be kind of imposing your views on other people and so on. And the outgrowth of that would be if you do start saying, hey, um, you need to believe in this. If it's the minority, then you'll start getting a, a sort of backlash. And this will just arise like from the very existence of having a society where multiple groups are all going to get along. You've got the big group and the big group, the big group could pressure smaller groups and so on. So in order to kind of have the, in order to have all the groups together, the tendency is going to be to kind of be pushing back on the largest group and saying, Hey, you know, dial it back. You have to get along with everyone. And, and notice that will be, Ah, you're a bigot for trying to tell that person. Ah, you're a racist if you disagree with that. It's gonna you're gonna have that sort of thing, and if you just bombard the biggest group with that for years, it actually works. It it, it actually works in the sense of you'll start backing down and then glorifying everything that's different from you, and eventually, eventually you realize, wait a minute, this is like harming us and destroying us, and you just you've you've spent decades destroying your ability to stand up. Uh, I believe you'll get it back when things get bad enough, but I think that's how it happens. And so there's just been massive pressure on Europeans for years that if you have any problem with Islam, if you have any objection to it, you're a racist, Islamophobic, hate mongering bigot. And so some people just cannot even process that. And guys, there's a lot of people don't realize how, my goodness, I could do a little video on this, but a lot of people don't realize how much people want to fit in with with kind of what's being said. AP, you remember that psychological experiment where they, they put someone in a room and they show them three lines, a little short yep. one, a medium length one, and a, and a long one. And then right beside it is one is, is another line. And it's obviously the same length as the one in the middle. And you can ask a hundred, you can ask a hundred people one at a time, bring them in there. Hey, you know, which one matches? And they'll say, obviously that one, the one in the middle, that's the, mm -hmm. that one's the same length. Uh, and if a person comes in and there's one other person there, 
And the, the, uh, the one other person says, no, actually, actually, it's the short one. They won't fall. They won't fall for it. They'll still say, no, 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 then you're an idiot. If there are two or three people on the two or three people all say, no, the short one is the one that matches. They'll still say, no, how are you guys not seeing this? You're all stupid. Once you start getting to eight or 10 or 12 people all saying, yep, it's the short one. The statistics are around 75%. Once a group is telling you something, it's around 75% of people will just go along with the group, even if they can see it. And even if it's like indisputable that this line is the same length as this line and the others are definitely not the same, 75% of people will go along with the group. So if everyone in every position of power, politics, uh, entertainment, journalism, everyone's telling you you're a racist and a scumbag if you question anything that comes out of the Muslim world, well, guess what? About 75% of people are just going to go along with it. You better and guess it. what? That's a big, that's a big, that's a sizable majority. That's the sort of majority that can silence a lot of people. <clears throat> precisely, precisely, precisely. That's my theory. I, I also want to add a thing here, which is uh, the impact of Christianity on society and on how people view, view others. Um, you could take that as a criticism or a praise, however you like it. But uh, th th there is no denying that the the religion and the culture which shapes this, um, you know, a society has huge impact on um, the the moral foundations that uh, the society carries with it that are that are well deeply anchored into the society um, and that that will stay with the society even if the society moved on from that religion and no longer believed in it like if if christianity suddenly disappeared from the world uh, europeans as post-christian society would still carry with them christian values uh deeply probably for centuries maybe even longer who knows and um he, here is the thing you have a christian way of thinking of uh seeing everyone as as equals having compassion forgiving and you know looking past each other's mistakes and then you have a secular society that comes out of that and that's in that secular society uh despite rejecting Christianity or despite rejecting Christianity as a as a yardstick for your values they still hold those Christian values of having compassion of viewing everyone as equal uh, of you know uh, trying to help everyone and all of that so they take those values and they turn that um, they begin looking at all uh, people including dangerous people including uh, you know dangerous people as long as they are simply people as long as they are simply others as people that they should have compassion for as people that they should forgive that they shouldn't judge and so on and out of that comes some naivety where these uh suddenly these non-christian secular post-christian people think it is a good thing to be as uh forgiving as possible as compassionate as possible as uh, loving as possible and as helpful as possible and as tolerant as possible no matter who we are dealing with so they take <laughs> some morality some value from that christian way of thinking and use it in a completely misguided idiotic way and apply it to a population that they should maybe shouldn't have that much tolerance for and that's how you how they begin uh turning idiotic tolerance into a virtue and suddenly it becomes a the new thing in europe in today's time to be uh tolerant and good to those who want to kill you that's how stupid it is yeah. And uh, what AP was saying right there is uh, similar to something that G.K. Chesterton uh, said. He said that, uh, and keep in mind, he's talking, this is a hundred years ago he's saying this. He's saying that uh, is, uh, Western civilization, the problem with Western civilization is it's a civilization of Christian values gone mad. And his basic position was, you know, if you, if you go back, tolerance was not just its own idol. It was tolerance is connected to justice, is connected to wisdom, and you have all of the virtues that are all kind of connected. And he says, uh, you know, once you tear out the foundation, then it's all these virtues that are just kind of hanging out there on their own. And different groups will take will take one as like an idol. It becomes an idol, but it's not connected to anything anymore. So, to so tolerance just becomes its own thing. 
and you're 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 basically worshiping tolerance in everything you do like, exactly. uh, like a like a religion but it's not it's no longer connected to not being stupid uh it's no longer connected to wisdom or or justice or uh or anything else and so uh yeah so that that's a it's just a problem uh, have to see where it goes uh let's see all right we're all right almost done almost done almost done please take my jizya i now feel subdued <laughs> You've been <laughs> subdued. <laughs> uh, Radical Cleric says, are my super chats not showing up? We went through your nope, super chats. Nope. What are you complaining about? I, I don't see any super chats from Radical No, King. I see zero super chats. Not even the one that's on the screen. Okay. Chris R said, uh, play, praise be to Zayna bint Alharath. She chose the goat. Zayna bint Alharath was the... Uh... <laughs> Cheeky Chesterton. Is that what you said, David? What? She did you say cheeky Chesterton? I don't know what I said. I've never said cheeky Chesterton in my life. What are you talking about? G.K. Chesterton. <laughs> I know, but uh, old school Pete said cheeky Chesterton. Oh, who is that guy? G.K. Uh, <laughs> Chesterton. That's nice. Yes. Yeah. Zaina Bint Alharath was the woman who uh, poisoned the goat that uh, she fed to Muhammad because Muhammad was I stupid. I chose the goat. Muhammad was stupid. That's one of the scenes. If, if we don't ever get a full length Life of Muhammad movie, I at least want a reenactment of that scene. Just, ha, ha, we killed all these people. We killed so many of the of the Jews of Kaibar. The woman walks in. Hi, Muhammad. I made you dinner. Oh, yeah. What a nice woman. Yes. Bring me the food. And, it's just so dumb. And then there should be a Curb Your Enthusiasm music playing at the end. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh ap you need to go full ck3 and make a new christian religion then you can still defend incest your already prophet religion reform <laughs> is 50 percent off i will do that thank you uh we have or m no comment uh immortal 17 i think the dude on the right should make his own channel about criticizing islam too he seems okay so this is a follow-up to the earlier comment saying David's okay, but yeah, AP should uh, make his own, make his own channel. No, YouTube is not for me. Uh, what's this mean? How many years would be if all hadith were counted in time? Yes. You mean if you just started counting up all hadiths, how many years would it take? I don't know what you mean. Just say yes. Oh. I don't know. 10? I don't know what you mean. Yes. Yes. AP says yes. You heard it here, folks. The answer is yes. All right. AP, any final thoughts on uh, anything here before we close out? Didn't know we'd be going this long, but um, uh, Muslim Cowboy gave us a lot to respond to. When you say a bunch of stupid stuff, would have been. Well, you know been, what they say. Would have been one thing if he was just wrong about what puberty is and we could have just responded to that. But no, he had to be wrong about everything. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, not sure when we'll be back on your channel. Probably on uh, Thursday. Thursday? Thursday sounds good to me. So hopefully AP it's, it's actually sets Thursday. up a dope show. We got cool Inshallah. stuff. Cool Inshallah. stuff coming up, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Well, I guess all well, you have do... you have a guy who says, uh, "Howdy, howdy, partner." Uh, I think this this Islamic religion is a very beautiful religion. I think Yeehaw! I'm going to these. Now, hey! what does it say? Because it say, it seems to say something very nice about married children, and that's just for me. So um, that's what he does. And you know what they say? Right? What do they say? I don't know. I thought you know. I know something they say. What they, they say, say? Ain't gonna fall an old child molester, sex offender, private pretender. Ain't gonna fall an old child molester. Islam's not for me. Islam's not for me. Islam's not for me. Catch y'all next time. <laughs>